You knew the warnings. Every town has a place best ignored. The crumbling cottage with skeletons in the walls, the briar-choked cemetery, the circle of scarred trees deep in the woods. The places on the periphery where dark deeds linger. Every town has a beast to avoid. The wolf with a baby's cry, the ragged man with yellow eyes, the rotting horse dragging victims into the ocean. The monsters who attack when you stray from the path. Every town has a superstition to be obeyed. A path walked in groups of three, a skull paraded in the winter months, a summer sacrifice made of straw. The rites that keep the darkness at bay. You knew the warnings, and you came anyway. Welcome to Solemn Vale, a lovely place to spend a day or stay forever. I am Tyler Elder Jekylls Online, and I will be your narrator for a series of interlocking, terrifying tales. We are Vorpal Tales, and we have a variety of terrifying tales and awesome adventures we play every day of the week, twice a day every day. Go to our website, vorpaltales.com, for the calendar, or check out a Twitch channel here. Also on our website, you can find all of our social media links, links to YouTube, our Discord, our Patreon, and our Ko-Fi. Special thanks to Dirty Vortex Games for supporting us playing their awesome game. Along with Roll20 for being our virtual tabletop, and myself, Darren Curtis Music, Gore Stories Incorporated, and Somnia Music for the tunes. Victims of the Weird, tell us of yourself and of your character in this chapter of our tale. Hey, I'm Eric at Modern Recluse Online, and tonight I'll be playing Bobby Montego, like a car. And apparently as fast as the car as well. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co. Designs, and tonight I shall be... Uh, very tired. But I shall be Michael Winthrop, whose pronouns are he, him. The lover. The fighter. America's ass. Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight I am playing Crystal, which I now realize why I suggested the name Lions. Because <laughs> my name is Crystal Lionheart. <laughs> Oops. Um, <laughs> I am playing also the lover, uh, but I don't have America's ass, but I might have America's boobs. <laughs> I mean, if you grabbed America's ass, then you'd have America's ass. This is true. Uh, well, hello. Uh, I am Kay. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm playing a rather uh, late guest, uh, Nathaniel Lyons. He, him pronouns. Uh, hello. My name is Rachel. You can find me stolen fires pretty much everywhere. And I am playing Jesse, the neighbor. Hello, I am Aaron, known as Gregatool Everywhere. I use any pronouns, but any pronouns you give me are mine forever. Uh, I will be playing Rowan Crawford, the sad pianist them. Excellent. And now, recap time for chapter one of our tale. You know, uh, that recap is a really great recap. And I just want you to know it is. It was very well done, very helpful. I read extremely it. Extremely fantastic. It. Rachel put in a lot of wonderful work. You did work. so good yesterday. I didn't even have to remind <laughs> you. <laughs> what is <this? coughs> uh, Allergies. It is 4 p.m. The sun has not yet fallen, though the deceased has been eulogized. Eulogized. Wow, that's a weird word. I didn't know it existed. People have been in and out of the funeral home the entire evening, much to the distress of the locals. Welcome to Nightvale. Just kidding. Uh, a flower pollen hangs heavy in the air. There's a mix of eclectic musicians, including a few famous names. Jessie is clearly awkward in the presence of so many famous musicians as she nurses her first of several bottles of balls. With the amount of alcohol here and the fishbowl of cocaine in the bathroom, Rowan struggles to maintain his sobriety. He also feels really bad for the fish. Crystal approaches a, very, a still very much alive Janis Joplin who doesn't recognize her but treats her kindly. Crystal picks up on some tension between John's widow 
Michael Winthrop, and John Cabot. Cabot. Michael looks up to realize he's being stared at by several people, including Cassie Lynn, John's niece. He makes a mental note to avoid her. Jessie manages to successfully convey her condolences to the widow, overcoming her natural awkwardness. Maybe she's born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. In the corner, Bobby is having his own version of a wake, which is rather beery. While he does that, Rowan gets closer to the body in the casket. He's convinced he saw the body's chest move, as if breathing. He grabs for his sponsor's arm as a flower wreath falls into the casket. No one but Rowan sees the eye open and wink at them. The rest of us pick up that the widow is faking her feelings of shock at the sudden chaos. Jessie tries to check in with her and picks up that she didn't like Michael's reaction, who is currently trying to fix the fallen wreath. Crystal goes to help and introduces herself to Michael. They have an awkward conversation about death when he notices a black diamond and ruby necklace that was John's favorite. When Michael leaves, Crystal discreetly pats down his suit looking for... something? She doesn't find it, but the look on her face betrays her shock and surprise. Around this time, the funeral director emerges. He points Rowan towards a very elegant wooden cabinet and whispers there's a bottle of how, how do you how do you say that? L- Lagavulin. Lagavulin. Okay, thank you. And two class glasses in there just for him. He points to the same cabinet out to Bobby, and promises him a bottle of Johnny. To Michael, he compliments how handsome John was, with a wink. To Jesse, he points out a U.S. marshal in plain clothes. And to Crystal. He compliments her latest song, especially the lyric about black diamonds and red rubies. The mourners trickle out until there's only six remaining. Rowan beelines for the cabinet and pours themselves a drink. Jesse tries to prevent a relapse when the funeral director interrupts us and gives us the rules. Rule one. The first thing we should do is a full sweep of the area to make sure nothing is out of the ordinary. Things pushed in must remain pushed in. Rule two, after the sweep, we may remain in this room. Rule three, we can sleep in this room. That's not advisable. Rule four, we may play music so long as it does not drown out any outside noises. Rule five, if we hear incoherent sounds from the crypt, we can ignore them. Rule six, if those sounds turn into panicked screams, ignore them if they are female and do not enter the crypt. If they are male, locate the source of the screams and pull out the body drawer to stop it. Rule seven, staff will be out of the building by dusk. Do not speak to a man in a lab coat. Rule eight, Always close their eyes. Rule nine. Keep all limb freezers locked at all times. Rule ten. Please always adhere to the family's last wishes. Rule eleven. Do not get caught in the halls between 11 p.m. and 1.31 a.m. Rule twelve. The power will go out at exactly 3.36 a.m. and last until 3.42 a.m. Do not search for the cause of the outage. Rule 13. Should we hear weeping? Never search for the source no matter how close it sounds. Rule 14. Should anyone knock on the door outside of business hours, do not answer. Before we have time to react, he leaves. Crystal asks the widow's wishes. They are for us to treat him with respect, ensure his passing is gentle, and try not to fight. We briefly have a talk discussing things like Jesse offering to be Rowan's accountability buddy and the legend of Van Halen's green M&Ms. Jesse says she's going on the rule one sweep and invites Rowan to accompany her. 
Michael decides to tag along while Russell and Bobby remain behind. <clears throat> Jesse decides to start from the top and work their way down. She starts by trying to pull a door open, but it's stuck. She pushes against the hinges and it opens. A wave of foreboding washes over Jesse, and she stammers something about getting some flashlights from the main office before dashing away. Michael and Rowan remain behind, Rowan reach reaching for the light switch. He slips on a greasy step, minorly injuring his knee. But they do turn the light on and see the 30 steps yawning twistily down to the concrete basement floor. They both begin venturing into the basement. Jessie finds some flashlights in the maintenance room after about 15 minutes. She's covered about a third of the building before finding these mag lights. She grabs three and spends some time in the chapel so she doesn't have to go back into the basement. Back in the wake room, Bobby is focused on reviewing a letter and putting a dent in his bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. For an alcoholic, his rate of imbibing is fairly decent. Crystal accepts his offer of a drink as Bobby begins reminiscing about John. They both hear whispering and glance over their shoulder and see movements within the shadowed podium. The candles around the casket flicker. Back in the chapel with Jesse, looking around at the stained glass, it's all very elegant and tasteful. But why is the stained glass scenes from Dante's Inferno? And why is Jesus upside down on the cross? She calls on St. Joan for help. Wait, no, the stained glass is normal. She sits down on one of the pews and centers herself a bit. Back to the basement. Rowan pulls out a fuck kami zippo and flicks it on. Or tries to. Two flicks don't work, and the third blows it out. Zippos aren't supposed to do that. And the shadows make it look like the bodies are sitting up. Where are they? Why is Michael hearing Lupine Vendetta in his head? He screams and runs for the door. But the door is shut and locked. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to immediately move the scene to Jesse, who's still wandering around, exploring the place in a desperate attempt to do anything but go near that basement. You make your way to the bathrooms, Jesse. You think you hear noises inside. They, uh... Kind of sound like someone who, I don't know, had a bad burrito and is regretting their life choices. Uh, yeah, Jesse will knock. Someone knocks on the bathroom door, Nathaniel, you know you're late. This is probably that guy who runs the place looking for you. You were supposed to be in the room for the stuff like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, so... <laughs> Sorry. So Nathaniel arrived uh, late after missing his train, uh, after missing his first plane um, to get here. He hadn't really wanted to be here. So he got on the second plane, was late and went right to the bathroom to sort of try and freshen up um, his hair. Uh, it's blonde and it's like a bottle blonde though. And it's sort of, uh, straight in an unnatural way and he sort of like splashes some water on his face he hears a knock oh sorry uh curator just one second um and yeah and he shuts off the faucet uh, unsure why these pipes are having such issue it's certainly not him and it's gonna go and uh open the door and before jesse is a, a six foot tall man striking uh deep set dimples uh brown eyes uh bottle blonde hair that sort of slicked back and is unnaturally straight um yeah and he says oh um are you the funeral director I, oh. I know i'm late no no um 
I, um, are you here for John? Yes, I'm here for the sitting up wake for Mr. Cabot. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, I'm, was, I guess, they, um, his neighbor, um, uh, yeah, um, most of everybody has gone home. No, but you said you were here for the sitting up part, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry, my plane got in, um, late. There was a delay. Yeah, um, so my name's Jesse. Uh, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Lyons, and he'll hold out a, a hand for you. And you'll see he's wearing a very nice suit. The jacket's actually kind of like a leather material. Uh, Jesse will uh, take his hand. It's uh, a strong, firm handshake. Very business, very, pra like it's clearly practiced to be right. Yeah, uh, Jesse is like very kind of nervous and on edge. Are you, you all right? You're quaking a little. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Where'd you say you were from again? Uh, New York City. Okay, um, yeah, uh, um, did they tell you the rules? No. But, like, you see, like, a little bit of recognition about the idea of rules in his, his eyes. Like I said, I just got in a, a few minutes ago. In fact, I think the doors were supposed to be locked, but I just turned it a little hard. Okay, well, so... Uh, there, there's a couple famous people here. Don't freak out. Um, I, sure, I'll be fine. Okay, and um, so we're supposed to be doing a sweep of the building before we go back to the main room. I mean, I'm, I'm almost done with, with part of it. All right. Well, let me uh, assist you in whatever ways you need, and you can inform me of these other rules. Uh, yeah, yeah, um. All right, come on. Um, yes. and thank you for everyone who got us to level five hype. Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, um. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's the basement, but you know what? We don't need to go in the basement. They've already got the basement covered. Uh, let's all go right. upstairs. Okay, yes, all right. And I'll hold the door open for Jesse to go through first. Um, so you were his neighbor. Um, yeah. Just... I... Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you know him? I've just known him since I was young, you know, moved around, things like that. Um, and he just but sort of brushes you off. A lot of cool stories. Yeah, I've got this. I, you know what? I'd rather hear yours. Oh, I'm nothing special. Well, that can't be true. I mean, if you've only met him recently and he still decided to have you here, listen, uh, if, and he, it's like a sort of a slight bitter laugh. <laughs> uh, if he considered you close enough for this, there must be something special enough about you for his attentions. He was selective just... with them. I just help, you know, shovel his driveway when it snowed and got groceries for him when he needed it. I see. Uh, and they're walking, talking. Uh, did you sit and talk with him at all? I'm, I'm curious. I, you know, I will say it has been a few years, if not more, since he and I last spoke. Yeah. Yeah. He told me all sorts of cool stories about his time on the road and, um, Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but the road. Being a musician, being a music teacher. He did love being a teacher. Uh, was he one of your teachers? He paused, pause, and. Mm. You could say that, sure. Like, Jesse's clearly on edge. <laughs> He's just walking, 
next to you striding these firm af affirmative steps like he's got like polished leather shoes that click as he walks with authority so who else is um staying here any well you, you mentioned celebrities uh any names that i might recognize or Oh yeah, there's that uh, pop singer Crystal, um, and then Bobby Montego's here too. We a pop singer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid and I don't I, recognize. I forget. Aaron is is your guy a musician, like a famous musician too? A pianist. Like a uh, like residual. Like you have to like dig deep to know who Rowan is. Mm -hmm. All right, then Jesse probably wouldn't know, so she just only brings up Crystal and Bobby. Wait, why would anyone know who Bobby is? Asterix, I don't think Bobby's a celebrity. Wait, isn't uh, he? I thought he was. Like, wasn't he like a country star? Did I get that wrong? No, no. I'm just, no. okay. <laughs> but that's hilarious and go, just go with it. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, yeah, Jesse doesn't listen to country music. She just assumes he's a country music just star. Assumes he's a country music star. Uh, I'm afraid, I, Bobby. The name, uh, the name sounds familiar. I think I can recall good old John mentioning that name before. Uh, Crystal pops. Here. I'm afraid, you know, I don't. I honestly don't listen to much music. Um, and the name's a little unfamiliar to me. So. But that's interesting. Bobby. Bobby rolling my head. I think that yeah. might have been another one of his students. Uh probably. And then I think there's um I think one of Rose's friends, uh Michael, he's here too. And then I think another student named Roland. Crawford's here. And he stops. Like he stops walking along with you. <laughs> Of course, Crawford's here. Yes, Crawford's here. Uh, no, Michael. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael would be Jennifer. Uh, well, I mean, Michael Winthrop was both Jennifer and John's friend, a family friend. How How do you know Rowan? Well, Crawford's John's favorite student. I heard he treated him like a son. Jesse just relaxes a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I heard some stories. Um, oh. They they seem to get along. Uh, Crawford and John. I mean, from the stories he told me, yeah. I mean, I didn't meet Roland until or Crawford. I don't know. Um, <laughs> until tonight. So he told you about Crawford, like he'll pick up walking again. You can see there's a tenseness there though. He he mentioned, he told you stories of Crawford, I see. Again, like I said, it's his favorite student, like a son to him, uh, of course. And his hands slip, you see his hand slip into his pocket and he like crunches something. But he's like, um, right, uh, upstairs. You said upstairs, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to be doing a sweep and like, yeah, like I said, there's, People are already doing the basement. That's where Crawford is. So you probably don't want to go there right right now. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so which oh, direction? Look, stairs. Oh, look, stairs. There we go. Stairs. And he'll open. If he'll he'll you know. Uh, would you like me to go first? Are we are we looking for like an intruder, or are we just checking that there's no like homeless stowaways? That's a uh, is that a problem in Solemn Vale? Uh, you know, I I only just showed up here um a couple weeks ago so i mean i haven't seen a whole lot of panhandlers um okay right um i don't well, i think it might just be like one of those local customs okay all right um i'll admit i well actually no i'd be lying if i said i haven't been to many funerals but i guess none in an old town like this um and he'll just start up the staircase uh, I'll head first in case there's any issues. Oh, come on. We can go together. I've got the mag light. That's fair. Then we'll switch to the basement for a moment. <clears throat> That's a good introductory scene for the new character. Okay. Hmm. People under the stairs. Hmm. 
you are looking around at the basement. When last we left, I believe you had been almost entirely swallowed by the darkness, but not quite, and you were hunting for a light switch of some kind. I believe Michael went screaming back up the stairs. Yes, yes I, believe, I believe I believe Rowan actually got the light switch and saw everything was fine and started checking the... Ah, yes, you did find the light switch. That's correct. Yes. <clears throat> yes, as you head deeper into the basement, you realize this is where the morgue is, where they, not the morgue, but this is where they keep the bodies. You see the table covered in unidentifiable stains of brown and red and yellow. Silver. Ever cadavers. The smell is a horrible combination of chemicals. The drain is clogged with. Not going to look close enough to find that out. Moving on. And there are three or four of the tables, stuff scattered everywhere like it's been used recently. And uh, freezer drawers, the kind where you store a body. Three of them are open, and then the drawers are pulled out. I will immediately go to close the drawers, or shove the drawers back and close the doors. Do you. You push two of them, but the one in the middle seems like it's stuck. It will not move. That's when the one right and the one right next to it, you start hearing noise. Like faint, soft, female crying. Well, uh, given the letter I got, I will open the, the drawer that sounds like I hear crying from it. You grab it and pull it open. It's empty. You pull the table out. I do. A rush of cold air and a short blast of wind that you swear you could hear, thank you, and then nothing. You're welcome, whoever you are. I'll push the drawer back in and close the door. What about the other one? Uh, I will fight with it if necessary. All right, it. let's do it. Let's do a... Uh... <laughs> Ops obstruction challenge, which is a physical roll. Difficulty will be three. Great, great. Um, I will, I will, I will not uh, spend a spend any of my attribute. Okay. I'll just roll one die. That is a five. You wrestle with it and you fight it, and eventually you just like rear yourself back, press yourself up against one of the embalming tables, and kick the shit out of it, and it slams shut. With a resounding bang, everyone in the place can hear. And that's when all of the lights flicker and go out in the entire building. You hear a shriek. <laughs> For only a moment before they flicker back on. I will, I will seal that door and then... During that long moment where the lights are off. Oh. Michael! No. From behind you. The familiar sensation of arms wrapping around your waist. The perfume, John's wife. The tickle of breath on your ear. I missed you. And then nibbling on your ear. <laughs> Hi. Again. I thought you left. Do you, like, turn around, reach back? <laughs> the amount of effort you're deciding you're putting into deciding. <laughs> it, this seems like it should be a simple choice, but with you as a DM, it's really not. Um, he will uh move forward and then turn around. When you move forward, you know that's like you feel like you should be tugging on the arms. There's nothing, no restraint, no sensation. You turn around and there's it's pitch black, but Nothing there. Gonna need you to uh, to make a foreboding roll. Difficulty three. That's soul. I gotta pull out my new dice from some weirdo that got me for secret Santa. I hear they say cool things when you roll a one. Well, only the D20 does, but yeah, yeah, it do. <laughs> okay. 
I rolled a four. Or beats three. You don't panic any more than you already were. <laughs> Sweet. In that long, dark moment on a different set of stairs. Nathaniel, or uh, Jesse. Nathaniel is just like trying to small talk. I'm going to give you some dialogue here, Kay, real quick. Nothing important. Like, awkward, I just met you small talk while you climb stairs, and then mid-sentence, cut off. You're alone in the stairs on the dark. Like uh, Jesse's alone or Nathaniel's alone? You are. So, like, Nathaniel was like, so how about that wet? And nothing. Sound of clothing gone, the voice gone, the, sound, the sense of another person there is gone. Uh, Jesse will immediately click on her mag light. Click. Click, click. This is not a goddamn horror movie. Click. Nothing. <laughs> uh, Jesse will run upstairs. Just hell for leather. Make a pressure challenge. No, not pressure. Uh, uh, pursuit challenge. Physical. Difficulty three. And I'm using uh, these dice that my Santa brought me. They're very pretty. Those are pretty. Very lovely blue. I have no idea who sent them to me, but I have been promised that Devin didn't touch them. So they might not be trying to kill me. They're not. I rolled a four. Devin must not have really touched them. You run up the stairs and run up the stairs and run up the stairs and you feel like it's ten minutes and you're not making any progress. But you keep going, fueled by adrenaline. Till you finally collapse on top of the stairs on your hands and knees, panting for breath, shaking a little. Nathaniel. Shoot. You're, you're in the middle of talking about the weather when you suddenly realize, because you can sense that sort of thing typically as a perfectly ordinary human being, uh, that no one's behind you, even though there was. Like that sense of someone being there is just gone. When the lights go out. He's just going to take a deep breath uh, and lean back against the railing and look back towards the upwards, but then also back towards the downwards where someone was. <laughs> There's nothing there. There's nothing Jesse's there gone. but darkness. <sighs> what have you gotten me into again? And he's just going to continue to trudge up the stairs. Uh, if it's really dark, he'll pull out his phone and put the flashlight on it. It rings. Huh. He'll pick it up, go for lions. Do you just answer it or do you look? Oh. Uh, he. You know what? He would look, yeah. He would look. It's the contact for your dad, whatever that says, and its ringtone. Literally. It literally says, do not answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's going to frown. A little and uh answer it and it won't be a uh, girlfriend be like, how did you acquire this number quiet male sobbing uh if you obtained this cell phone i would highly recommend returning it and getting a new one and not utilizing the numbers within in John's voice, while sobbing, I always knew, but I never cared. You're still my son. Make a wits roll. New... Difficulty three. What? Okay. Mental. Uh, that is a four. No signal. <sighs> yes, no I service. am your son. Do you... All right, that's strange. All right, um... Ah, those vodkas on the flight. All right, sure, let's play this game. Yes, I am your son. I'm sorry Can for I help everything you? that happened. Nothing happened, so what do you have to be sorry for? Come see me in the coffin. And then nothing, just silence. And he'll just pocket the phone and uh, turn around from the stairs and start heading like I'm, I'm assuming there's arrows or something maybe on the wall that will direct towards certain locations there probably um, would be if you could see but that's when the lights will come back on but we'll switch to someone else first 
Okay. Bobby. The lights go yes, out. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. Yeah, I knew this place was uh, built like crap. I, 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 I thought those, uh, they must have used spackle wood for this over here, and they probably fucked with the lights over here, and they just didn't, they just, they just built, didn't build this place very good at all. No, sir. Now, you two can you actually. You right over there, Crystal? Yeah, you two can actually hear each other, but not see each other. Okay. Uh, are the candles still lit? They blow out when the lights go out. Okay, uh, I still have my lighter mm -hmm. in my hand, so I'm going to, and I was relatively close to mm -hmm. the coffin and the candle, so I'm going to, like, feel around in the dark to try to relight them. First thing you notice is the lighter won't light, even though the scratch noise is correct. And you can smell the fluid. It just won't light. And while you're feeling around, you brush the coffin, and the hand grabs yours and holds it. Make a foreboding challenge, difficulty three. Um, I think these six dice I decided for this character. Yes. Hmm. Foreboding is what? Uh, foreboding is soul. Foreboding is soul. Foreboding is basically the are you going to run and scream roll. And what is taking from the pool give me? Plus one to the final result after you see if you succeed or not. Okay. I rolled a three. So I match. You manage to not rip your hand away. Uh, John's voice whispers to you, I always loved you. You don't hear any of this though, Bobby. Loved or love? <laughs> uh, the hand caresses the ring finger on your hand in response to that. Bobby. Yes. You're standing there holding your glass, talking to Crystal, who suddenly got real quiet. Oh, are you there, uh, Crystal? Hold on, let me get my phone. Someone refills your yeah. glass. Oh, shit, thanks. Wait, who the fuck was that? <laughs> like, he tries to uh, <laughs> access the... The flashlight app on his phone, like, start looking around. Lights, the light slowly flicker back on as noise filters in. And it's like a fancy bar. A bartender in front of you in a nice suit. Flipping the decanter, shaking the bottle. You can you can hear the ghostly sounds of people around, but you see no one but you and him. It's a lot like that scene in The Shining. Yeah, I was going to say, like, holy shit, it's match, match. Uh, uh, so Bobby will just look around and go, am I having a... Religious experience right now? What the fuck is going on around here? Bobby. Excuse me, sir. It's good to see you again. We've missed you. He slides your favorite drink over to you. What's this? I don't know what he drinks. Uh, I don't know alcohol. Uh, whiskey. Whatever. Sure. Uh, That's what I think it is. Perfectly done the way you want. The exact amount of what? fingers, the exact right temperature. Where'd the pretty girl go? She was right there. Uh... Pretty girls? Is that what you want, Bobby? Well, you know, we're we, in, this, in this bar, we're here to make the customer happy. We can give you whatever you want. Well, I just want to go back where I was, you know. Whatever your uh, ideal girl is, saunters up to the bar and sits next to you. Not specific <laughs> person, but type. Oh, <laughs> hello, darling. Um, but really, I, I just want to get back to where I was. Just to, I'll have what he's having. Stand right over there. The bartender uh, slides her one as if it was already ready. This must be one of those type of uh, funeral homes, huh? Like the ones that have the all-you-can-eat buffet. I, I just want to get back to the parlor room, <laughs> though, because we were in a sitting-up wake, and there was a and there was a lady there. She was really nice. She giggles and I says, that means you've got all night, right? And she tinks your glass and takes a drink of hers. Oh, shit. Um, he, he will resist the urge to uh, imbibe and uh, and more <laughs> before just like trying to find a way back to where he was. Make a taint roll. Difficulty four. Ooh. Okay. Ugh. <clears throat> Well, I have weird. I think I do. Yes, I have weird. So I can spend that after I roll to boost, right? 
Only one, or I can use like all of them. You know. can roll first, and if you fail, then you can buy weird as much as you need to succeed, plus one each. He's an alcoholic, so he's I think uh, justified in spending the weird or whatever to try to. But you would do that to... after you roll. If you want to spend right. before you roll, you'd burn your actual attribute. Uh... Weird gives it's you less back, everything. but it's how you see. It's how you keep going if you know you failed. I already burned one point of soul, and I'm at mine three. So uh, uh, I'll burn a point of body because it's you know. To do that, you would have to convince me why uh, you would roll body instead of soul for this, which you can do. You can just say you physically resist the urge, but then you still have to take the weird point to roll a different attribute than I called for. Oh, right. Uh, I'll just... Oh, and if I spend the weird, then I gain it back, right? Like, I, I add it to the... Uh, to your personal got. pool, yeah. Shit. Um, but you get a d6 instead of a plus one. The worst you can do yeah. is the plus one. <laughs> Still right. a better deal. I'll 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 resist with my body of six. Okay. So it'll go take a point five. of weird and roll two d six. Nice. Okay. Yeah, he's like he's looking at that drink and it's like holy oh, shit that looks good. Okay. Ah, I got a five. All right. Nice. Ma'am, you're very lovely. Uh, thank you very much for the offer, sir. This is impeccable service, but I really just need to get back to pay my respect to Mr. Cabot. And if you don't mind, uh, if you could just show me the way to get back there, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. The girl leans forward and kisses you on the cheek, your favorite perfume. And the bartender says, you're always welcome here, Bobby, because this is home. And then it fades to black again. And then the lights come back on and everyone rushes for the wake room. Where you can reconvene. <laughs> Panting and gasping, most of you, probably some of you looking around like, what the hell? Uh, Rowan, Rowan's going straight for the casket. Okay. <laughs> um, well, how, how is the casket? Because I'm standing right there. The hands are unchanged from where they should be. They are not touching yours. Okay. Excuse me, why are you rushing a casket, Crawford? And uh, he doesn't look Fuck off, Nate. Like he just not the time. <laughs> You wouldn't uh, know that his it. name is Nate. Oh, what would he I call him? Uh, well, so it depends. Do you recognize this? Do you think? Do you feel you recognize this person? The hair color is wrong. The eye color is wrong. They're a lot taller than you last saw them. Then I probably wouldn't. Yeah. You can roll for it. That's a wits roll. You can roll. Yeah, wits, wits roll. roll. Difficulty right. three. Oh, is to the a audience one, a member. One die or a pool? It's a one die yeah. unless you burn. I'm not my, burn yeah. for this. Yeah. <laughs> to answer the audience question, I think from Lupine Vendetta, uh, three is an average difficulty, but it goes all the way up to ten. I roll a four. <laughs> yes, it takes you a minute, but yes. That's JJ, uh, John Kebo's son. Yeah. JJ, fuck off. Not the time. I'm going to grab john by the lapels and shake him enough of this fucking farce get out of this casket uh, how I'm do the rest of grab, you react <laughs> i'm going to gr bodily grab crawford off of my father's corpse okay what about oh, anyone else is anyone else going to tackle this guy i'm not tackling uh, him. or you know so intercede I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going is to like from. peel his hands off of uh john's <laughs> jacket Uh, Jesse was coming from pretty far away, so I think she just walks in to see uh, Rowan begin shaking the corpse, and she's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what about uh, Bobby or uh, Michael? Michael? I'll try to intercede. Uh, you know, not to, like, tackle somebody, like, ah, he's just gonna, like, hey, hold on a minute there, buddy, hold on. Let's just back up and get clear our heads here. Yeah, also, Michael. Go for it. Oh, Michael would step in between and try and like shove them apart. No, so, because it's good for the scene. Crawford, Rowan makes no rolls. Rowan sets a difficulty of ten. All the rest of you roll a single d6. Oh, if you get to ten, you stop him. A total combined between the four of you. You should be able to. Five, right off the bat. And I good think start. he's gonna say, he's gonna say, I don't know who this JJ is. Four. Oh yeah, they restrain you, before, but you get halfway there and they're on you. 
I don't I know. I saw him is. wink. I saw him fucking wink. You're drunk. Also, yeah, I don't know who this JJ is. My name is Nathaniel. I think you had more okay. to drink than I have, and I had a body body experience. I'm sir. sober. I've been sober for. <laughs> He pulls out the, the coin to remind himself. <laughs> well, himself. that's uh, <laughs> if you're sober, I'd hate to see you drunk, sir. And I saw him wink. Should... Owen, I understand this is stressful for all of us, but assaulting a dead body isn't going to help you. Can I like deposit him on a chair in the room? Yes, like, away from the casket. I think I think he slumps after being stopped, and just like full. Uh, Jesse. Goes to the casket and like, <laughs> like brushes the body down and puts anything that was moved back to where it should be. I'm so sorry, John. Jesse, when the drama is happening before you step forward, a voice in your ear. Well, this is dramatic. You spin around, there's no one there. <laughs> kind of sounded like John. Get your shit together, Crawford. Uh, Jesse will still do the same thing. Whatever. You 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 believe that phony corpse of your dad. Don't know what you're talking about. And he's gonna turn his heel on you and sort of walk over towards the casket. <laughs> dad? Oh, so this this is your dad? No. Um, do I know I'm anything? Oh, uh, do I know that John had a son? Uh, so what I want is I want a wits roll from Jesse, a wits roll from Crystal, and a wits roll from Michael. Difficulty is six, but any one of you could spend a point of weird to alter the narration of the scene and say, yes, somehow you knew. Uh, I will spend that point of weird. All right. So, all of you know this information, but because you spent the point, you can narrate how, what happened. That it was semi-public knowledge to people he cared about. Now, this isn't... So, like, everyone knows he had a kid, but it's not really public knowledge anything about this kid because he was very anti-paparazzi and etc. It was very... And yes, you were all close to him, but it doesn't mean you knew a lot of details about the kid. However, the three of you do, and the reason you had to spend a point of weird is you also always heard rumors. It might not have been his. But he always swore up and down it was. So what's the source of the rumor? Uh, you know, he, he showed me a picture of you once. Again, I'm... You must have me mistaken. Like I said, I'm Nathaniel Lyons. Nathaniel yeah. Lyons. I... Clack the last I, name. I get that. I get that. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. That's a choice for you to make. <laughs> and I'm I think... sorry, I'm intruding. I'm gonna... Go to that flag of wool and don't mind me. I'm so sorry. Oh, and real quick, Ro Rowan has got up and grabbed the bottle of bourbon now and said, "Fuck it." <laughs> real, real, real. Yeah, real sober. Um, and yeah, Nathaniel gives a particular look to Michael, uh, and then is going to go over to the side of the casket. I am afraid the player thinks things, <laughs> many things. Is uh is is he all right? Is is John all right? The body also, is undisturbed. Also, your your uh, your mother, if uh, you are his son, was in the basement. And, and he actually lo like for a moment it looks like he's about to ignore you as he's like keeps talking. But like you say that, and he like turns and looks at you. What? Uh. Yes, uh, the, the lights went out, and and I heard her behind me, and I I then I, I turned up. around and she wasn't there actually, so I'm not really sure what's going on. 
Have you been drinking as well, Mr. Winthrop? I had maybe three sips of wine. Nella, I can assure you at least my mother is nowhere near this building. At least not currently. Strange. And let's see, your Bobby, that's Rona, Michael. Who might you be? He's looking directly at Crystal. Jesse is uh, topping off her balls with Rowan's bourbon. <laughs> Me? Yes. They, they happily oblige that. Uh, Did I stutter? You must be oh, a naive little boy. I'm Crystal. Nice to meet you. Farmer, you are. Hmm. Pleasure. It's all mine, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Were you one of his students? No. I'm like that. He together. Good shows together. Lovely. And and he is your necklace still out? Uh. The necklace, no, but they're. If you would choose to notice, there is a ring on her finger now that wasn't... I think he You wouldn't goes, have known that it wasn't there be be yeah. before, but she has a ring. He goes to shake wedding. your hand, I think, and like turns your hand very quickly when he notices this black I mean, diamond and a ruby. He give that to you. Hmm. Of course Who you don't. Gave it to me. John. The Why ring? Did you give me a ring? I don't know. That's why I'm very curious. And can I look her over again? So, um... Yeah, what am I can. <laughs> uh, what am I lovely... Well, I've got two different things that maybe are applicable if I want over possibly one of which is uh that harvard degree baby and the other is uh catch my d throwing these a's Psst, he's a da hmm. so oh, what specifically are you trying to figure out like I, I i think he's maybe gathering an idea looking at this ring seeing this young woman very close to his father's you know cabinet who speaks of working with him like who is she to to john Cabo? so <clears throat> That would be a pressure challenge. Difficulty okay. six. Okay. Uh, also, hello to Mark. Like, Hi, Marlet. Thank you for the raid. Hello. We hate you. Thank you I for cannot the raid. wait to see the yeah. end of your lovely 10 candles game. Fingers crossed, Ari. Ooh. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I will also. Are you figures for. crossing for a ten candles game? Mistake. Yeah, yeah, Mistake. yeah. It's, well, it's like we, a it's like a holiday themed one. They were kids. We'll we'll see. We'll they see. They were kids. Can finger cross for a meaningful death. Yeah, for things. Listen, Full Ari Lieberman. <laughs> Ari Lieberman is dealing with these shenanigans. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, I'm assuming this is a mind check. Nope. Yes, pressure oh, is a mind yes. check. Okay, I'm gonna add take a point of mind to do that. Okay, so two d six. Uh, four plus two is a six. You've never seen her before, uh, in person, but you do recognize uh her as the singer she is. Like it clicks in your mind that she's a pop star, no. and you do yeah. remember that I am not a pop star. <laughs> yeah, she's a punk rock star, and you do know she opened for your dad at the once or twice at a concert, mm -hmm. and he helped her write a single. Yes. And, you know, your dad is a rock star. People are people, and they do what they do when they're on the road sometimes. Yeah. And he, he but you don't have any proof of that. Yeah. But he'll... He's got ideas. His parents weren't living together anymore. Uh... 
He'll look you up and down in a, you, at a, it's a certain kind of look. And you're just like, hmm, well, pleasure to meet you, Miss Leonhard, was it? I think I'd heard of you before, maybe. Not much of a music man. No. Oh. Okay, you'd still hear me on the radio. I don't listen to the radio. I play audiobooks in my car. Or do you just listen that to That sounds boring as fuck. I don't, know, I don't know much about music, but I got this here harmonic. I can play pretty good. <laughs> See? That was oh, Bobby. impressive, Bobby. I think you would excel at the kazoo. I tried that too. Wasn't very good at it. John said I have potential, though. You know he... Amazing Grace? Oh, yeah. Did that one at the my niece's last birthday party. Yeah, she really dug it. Pressure challenge, difficulty <laughs> six. Amazing Grace oh, at shit. <laughs> Play that harmonica. <laughs> Pressure challenge, Bobby. DC six. 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 <laughs> you play the song perfectly, but it's not the oh, song thank you. anyone. Oh, thank you. But it's not the song everyone expected to hear. It's a melancholy tune, sad, deep. Makes you all have all the feels, including yourself, Bobby. Me, you look. You, he drops his hat grace. respectfully. You played this at your niece's birthday party. Yeah, it was a request. And I, in that I requested we, I, I played the song, you know? You all realize when the tune finishes that it takes a minute to hear it from a harmonica, but it's one of John's songs. And there was something about John's songs. They always would pull the feelings out of you, like in a way most music can't, no matter what he wrote or played or who sang it. It tore out the I'm feeling he wanted you. you to feel every time. It was almost supernatural. Didn't know you do covers, Bobby. Oh, sure. Once or twice, you know, I dabble. Uh, you watch as Nathaniel pulls a set of, like, you know those, like, disposable earplugs? Like a package of those? He's like, why don't you warn someone so they can prepare before you do such things? Oh, I, I, yeah, I give you all the pre preparation you need there, buddy. So you know you're really at the wrong type of funeral. You don't like music. Oh no no no! Don't worry about don't worry about him. Oh, we're not really going to talk about all that weird. As pretentious shit. about music as they come, aren't you? Uh, I'm sorry. Is it is it Nathaniel now? Is that what it is now? Legally, it is Nathaniel. Cool, cool. Leans back with his bourbon, <laughs> their bourbon. Uh, are we really not going to talk about how weird this place is? Like, what's going on tonight, y'all? I mentioned it earlier. This place is strange. It's just yeah. a funeral home. Most of you are inebriated, and I'm sure you're all feeling things about what's going on. Grief yeah. causes yeah, 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 and, and things. You, you, you accuse us all of being drunk. Is 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 that it? I mean, Michael could probably uh, do some good from drinking. Uh, oh, don't don't worry. Uh, Nate here has a uh, some deep Nathaniel. inferiority. Deep Nate here has some deep Nathaniel. inferiority complex. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not drunk. Ryan, yet. Where did you, you go to school, uh, Crawford? Up, Michael. You uh, know again, I went to school. Where did you go to school? Also, my name is not Michael. It's Nathaniel. No, I was talking to Michael. Oh, you're talking to Michael, because right? He said that well, you that was Michael. everyone was inebriated, and he clearly is not. You, you and know, neither though, was if, Jesse if, until a few moments ago. If if I'm going to be accused of such, I might as well. And he grabs his glass of wine that he took like three tiny sips from, and just <laughs> you chug the shit out it. of it. Yes, I'm, he does. I'm, I'm going to need you to make a. Uh... <laughs> uh... That's Obstruction crazy. challenge, difficulty three. Why I'm drunk. physical. We'll be fine. We're we're not five. Talking. This die you gave me, yes. It is straight tequila. You choking gas. You choking <laughs> gas, but you managed to catch your breath. That was the rule. 
But you <laughs> swallowed that shit. That's going to hit you in a minute. Look, I... Mm, tequila. <laughs> oh, you need a chaser. Here, have some of this. <laughs> it's a blue bottle. <laughs> Please tell me it's moonshine. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Walker, I found in the closet. Johnny <laughs> Walker Blue. I already came mm. out of the closet. But, but I, I don't <laughs> mean. Don't make me go back in. <laughs> I don't mean a high school Crawford. I'm at college. Or did you make it there? You know what? You... I, I'm done. I'm done with your your your. Condescending. Your snaky bullshit. <laughs> I'm done with yeah. it. I think the rest of like Rowan stands up and just throws the rocks ass aside. Tell them who you are. Tell them. Tell that, them who you are. I have given my legal name. At that moment, I need a wits check from everyone. Difficulty four. Oh, shit. You know, one could cut the sexual Five. tension between you two with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I rolled again? a two. Uh -oh. I rolled a what four. Was it again? Uh, wits. Search check. Uh, uh, what was the. What do we need to hit? Okay, I got a four. Okay, cool. I was like, did you just spin a point? Got a four. Okay. Anyone who, anyone who did not succeed simply does not notice this. Anyone who succeeds does. But it's up to the character to say anything, because if no one says anything, the two that failed won't know. You hear a very faint, quiet female sobbing, and you realize you couldn't hear it because your voices were drowning it out, and uh, <clears throat> so was the music. Rule what, number where is four. The Where's the sobbing coming from? Oh, rule number four. Not supposed to uh, I will go and turn down the music immediately. No. I'll go turn down the music. No, no, no. The, the, the harmonica music. The harmonica. Oh. Okay, uh, there is. Harmonica so, uh, is not that loud. <laughs> right, but when he played the harmonica, supernatural music came out of it. One of John's songs. Yeah, one of John's songs. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna. Anyway, I, I will. I will. Female, I'll happily no. go over there and oh, knock wait, it no. out of Bobby's no. hands. Happily. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's too late. The music already happened. Oh, what is wrong with music? Also, do we? Is there a woman crying? Was there someone yeah, here? Don't, don't, don't ignore it. What do you oh, mean? Oh, you're right. It? Mr. Pishposh is right. I heard somebody crying <laughs> not too far away from. It's me. one of the rules. Didn't you read the rules? Don't touch I my wasn't... harmonica again, if sir. If you hear weeping, you. don't. Okay, all I have in my quick notes, which is the notes can I, Crystal can I... actually has, is you see those? Weeping, I didn't don't get search. Rules. Well, uh, you should have been here. <laughs> My flight was delayed. That Rule number four, like... don't don't play music if, well, you can play music as loud as you want, as long as it doesn't drown out outside noises. So yes, stop it. But rule number 13, if you hear weeping, don't search. Y'all remember all those goddamn rules? I thought that was she weird. Literally, Someone... She has a piece of paper that's just like crumpled in her like pocket. Well, she's like, organized. All you right. hear Nathaniel Mumper under his breath. Maybe there is some use for her. Um, Miss Leonhard, could you recite the rules you have written, please? I, Like I said, I, I, I know one of them was to do a sweep of the house, and apparently there's more. Uh, yeah. No, no sweeping. No. Repeat uh, the, the building. Repeat the rules. The drawers. Two, after the sweep, you may remain in this room here, but you may not want to. Uh, three, you may sleep in the wake room number four uh can't drown out outside noise which we did five can't ignore oh you can ignore the crypt noises uh if you hear panic screams if it's a female don't go if it's a male quiet sobbing case, immediately turns into panic screams definitely don't do that uh male <laughs> uh we should locate him and pull his body um i don't pull the drawer intend out on doing that. Uh, that his body is in uh seven a man in a lab coat uh don't talk uh <laughs> um rule number eight always close their eyes uh number nine lock the freezers number 10 <laughs> adhere to the family wishes uh somebody else can tell you what jennifer said uh, number 11, uh, don't be in the hall from 11 p.m. to 1.31 a.m. Uh, from 3.36 a.m. to 3.42 a.m., don't search. Something. That one's kind of scribbled. Uh, 13, weeping, don't search. 14, <laughs> knocking, don't answer. It's quite simple. The screaming what is getting is irritating now. Uh, Nathaniel's going to go up to the coffin and sort of oh. like... 
Oh, uh, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> he's going just to sort the coffin. Of... He's not going to the door. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just going to go to the coffin. And he's going to just sort of like lean over and whisper and be like, what have you gotten me involved in, old man? Oh, so you know too, Van. An after party. A chuckle comes from the coffin that only uh, not Nathaniel hears. Not Nathaniel. <laughs> not Nathaniel. His legal name is Nathaniel. Um, now. The screaming woman from right outside the room continues unabated. Is that shit for real? Are you? Am I the only one who's hearing this shit right now? We're hearing it. I'm just gonna, the fucking rules. We're hearing it. I'm gonna pull out the. Not, I hear it. Answer I'm gonna yours. pull out the earplugs I mentioned having before. Anyone want a pair? Your name. Your name should be Nathaniel. <laughs> I got that idea from a voice in my head named Mel. Nay, Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. Hey. Look, Very are witty, we, Mr. Winston. Are we sure that's not a real person who needs help? Well, I'm gonna go who find cares? out right Jesse, now. Jesse, you it. heard the rules. Bobby, you, don't you dare. I will Jesse, you heard the you. rules. All right. Um, the door gets flung you open. You might like it. Oh, dear. And a teenager walks in. I look at the time. Oh, the, is it his niece? Yes. Okay. It's still evening. It's still within business hours? No. It's no. after six, but it's still evening. You are in evening, early evening. We're not. Early we're evening. not eleven yeah. yet. So technically, yeah. this is breaking the rules because no one's allowed in after or before. Uh, you don't know. Hours, this right? person might have been here. You recognize that she was at the funeral. This is his niece. Remember, the little, the little, oh, the, the little Lynn. blonde Kathy. Spitfire. Yeah. yeah, Kathy Lynn. Yeah. What the hell so, is with the screaming? You, you heard it too, right? Where is it coming from? Don't mind it. You know the rules. Just. Fuck, Fuck the rules! Uh, Somebody's well, in actually, trouble, we gotta help him! Because she wasn't here, because I don't... Is, is, well, no. Is his niece part of the wake? Yes. Officially? Okay, never mind. She doesn't know the rules. <laughs> sitting up. You know what, Bobby? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go find out about that. I story. will! And I'll take my no, harmonica, look, too. Look, look, Good. I have, I have an idea. No, no, it's funny. I, You're bullshit harmonica. I anyway. have an idea. And Jessie will pull out her own phone and just dial 911. <laughs> Oh, 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 While you on, do that, Jesse. the niece says, why don't you all shut the hell up? Look how disrespectful you're being to my uncle. She glares especially hard at Rowan. <laughs> and when she yells, why don't you all shut the hell up? The screaming stops. <laughs> oh, good. At least somebody listens to me. Bunch of assholes. <laughs> she walks over to the coffin. <laughs> the phone. Looks right at uh, Kay's character. What's up, Nate? Nathaniel. <laughs> Sure. No, you're having you. fun, Catherine. You were always my favorite cousin, and it's because you're so you're so easily amused, and you have such a great sense of humor. Glare, ah, cousin. I <sighs> and you really him. know how to make someone's life hard. That's sure, that's my, why he loved you. That's my line. <laughs> So, Did you need something? So, why would you lie? Yeah, you to leave. This is a wake. Me to leave? Well, yeah, look at all the drama you're causing. I didn't do anything, and I was requested. You wrecked to that be bathroom. Here. I didn't do anything to a bathroom. <laughs> I washed my face. What was already happening in there happened before I arrived. Right, right. Walks right up to Bobby after making sure the uncle is all situated. Using that no, grabs a glass out of your hand, slams it back, hands you the empty glass. This kid is all of 18 or 19. Why, Catherine, your parents would be so disappointed to see you drinking. Have you met them? Unfortunately. Then you know that's a bunch of shit. You are an underage person thing. Michael, just to stop. Just please. <laughs> Come on, just turn face. around. Can you just turn around for the rest of us? Looks at Michael. Yeah. Who the hell are you? You two I recognize. I need autographs later. You don't uh, recognize him, really? How do you not recognize me? I John's best friend. Exactly. What? Uh, I never heard of you. Giggle not mutters under her breath. Is that what he told you? Yeah, one of the lovers. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Looks at, looks at Jesse and says, I'm John. sorry about these assholes. Uh, as always, Catherine, your appearance is a pleasure 
Now, please, why don't you leave? Hey, come on. This this is awake. We promised Rose we wouldn't fight. Who we is Rose? All... His wife. That makes yeah. that makes your cousin giggle that you say that. Her name isn't Rose. It doesn't matter is... what her name is. What matters is what the family wants. I'm sorry. Are you I here thought... to respect his wish their wishes or not? I thought we settled on Rose as her name last week. Whatever. Uh, we might have, but it wasn't in your notes, so we made up a new name. <laughs> <laughs> Which I had a plan for. Uh Rose is her actress name. Her real name is Jennifer. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, then she would have said Jennifer. Jennifer has that we not fight. Fine. That's what Jennifer wants. We won't do that. And uh, Nathaniel will go over to a seat and just sit down. Although it's one relatively close to the crypt. Casket. Is it casket? Okay. Yeah. Now, before Jesse has to say anything, while well, the big argument is happening between the two smartasses, 911, what's your emergency? Oh, no. If the screaming stopped, Jesse would hang up. Okay. Uh, you can't right after, it, right after you call back. Call back. <laughs> yeah, that's what's about to happen. Right after uh, you make your comment about Jennifer wanted us not to fight, your phone rings. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesse will like step away, like just so she's mm -hmm. still in the room, but like at the doorway, so like not, you know, respectful distance. Solemn Vale Sheriff's Department. We got a nine one one call from this number. We're doing a wellness check. Oh, hi. Yeah, we're at the funeral home. Um, we heard someone God damn it. Screaming. We got another call from the funeral home, Bobby. <laughs> from I the background. God damn it. And the definite click of a shotgun. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, look, we heard screaming, but it stopped. You should probably the... ignore it. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's what we were told. I was just kind of worried. Because it's... Wait, is this Jesse? Yeah. Are you with those folks who had to sit up all night? Oh, God, Jesse. You should get the hell out of there. From the background, it's after dark, Sheriff. It's too late. Fuck. <laughs> um, I mean, everything's okay right now. That's good. I'm sure you'll be fine. From the background, she's going to fucking die. I'll call if there's another problem. All right before you hang up, a different cop from a, from the background says, "Yeah, but you know, she didn't actually move in, so it's fine." Then <laughs> you hang up the phone. She's just a renter. <laughs> tourist, you're a tourist. <laughs> Do with that what you will, Jesse. I own cops. Jesus. Yeah, uh, a cab. They've been nice to me so far. They kind of have to be. Um... Well. Anyway, perhaps we should all sit in contemplative silence. And he like gestures to the rest of the seats. That's probably the only thing I can agree with you saying today. Yeah, let's go do that. I don't, then he, I then don't... he snickers and says, don't hurt yourself, Nathan. I don't want a kitten contemplative silence. Daniel just looks directly, Catherine. I went to Harvard. Oh, did you? Harvard, how nice. Oh, uh, it's a shame <laughs> that you couldn't get into Yale. Huh? Tipping back, Berman, like. <laughs> I got into Yale, Are thank you. you. I also got into, Yale. I got into Yale. I also got into Columbia and Stanford. I chose Harvard. Oh, what a treasure you are. Who knows your name again? Nathaniel Lyons, Crawford. How was I heard uh heard you went to rehab. How was that? So, before you answer that. Uh this funeral home is a Midwest rural funeral home, so there's windows in the room that look out on the parking lot. And you see a car pull in cuz the lights hit the window as it turns. It pulls up in front of the door and it's got uh Jackson's Pizzeria on the top and some kid gets out in a red hat with a pizza box. Niece jumps up and says, "Good, it's finally here." And starts exiting you ordered the room. Pizza, Catherine? I'm hungry, aren't you? No! no. In I my ate on the flight. <laughs> I could dash. I could dash right now. I mean. Okay, so, Michael, 
Fuck yeah, Make pizza. an obstruction roll. And, uh, <laughs> Rowan, do you go to get the pizza? I do. <laughs> okay. I do. Four. You grab the teenager who squirms out of your grip, but you slow her down enough to give Rowan time to slip through the door. <laughs> God damn it. No, not you all, supposed to go in or out. You all look out the window as the pizza guy looks at the door, and then, like, you, you see the light of the door opening, and there's an exchange of information, and 20 comes out, and the pizza goes in, and the door shuts. Pizza kid leaves. Rowan just get tricked into paying for that pizza. <laughs> make a... Rowan's really drunk. Make a... <laughs> make a, first make a wits roll if you choose to be looking out the window during that exchange you do not have to difficulty is three six you were muted Rachel uh, this is all painfully awkward so Jesse's looking like anywhere except at other people and I got a six okay. I also got a six Michael's a too busy tackling 18 oh, we got rolls. nothing okay I got to roll one. So all of you, so the three of you, uh, Nathaniel and Jesse and Crystal, uh, as the pizza guy turns to leave, he locks eyes with each of you individually, even though you're all, like, through the window. There's a red glint in the eyes and a little smirk. And then make a uh, foreboding roll, difficulty four, the three of you. Okay, you all see, it's almost like as he steps into the car, his shadow does the opposite. Like it's walking inside. Right as the door shuts. The door to the funeral home. That's where we're going to take our mid-show break. Um. So, don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in about ten minutes.
And we've returned from break. The Adventure Archive, thank you for the raid. Welcome. And that's when Rowan walks in with pizza. Hmm. Three large. I think I think the top the top box is already open. He's like got a slice. Or they they've got a slice, like just <laughs> you open hey, the door. Hey, hey, come on, come on. Not not in the viewing room. There's a uh, the local version. What else? Are you going to eat? Sorry. You're fine. There's the local version of a Supreme, and there's a pepperoni with extra cheese, and then roll a D6 for me, Ambrose. Random pizza. Two. Two. Savannah, tell us what the third pizza is. Pepperoni and black olive. There you go. Yum. Now, the local version of a Supreme is uh, ham, bacon, pepperoni, green olives, uh, red onions, and green peppers. Eric. It's the Midwest. Really That's a real thing in the Midwest. There's one in my fridge, right. actually. <laughs> I know Take it is, and I eat it. And we're good. I voted all. <laughs> That's for exactly right. Exactly right. Take those fucking olives off. <laughs> Tofu on it. <laughs> Tofu. Oh. I I don't. It's nothing I eat. I just reached for the strangest thing to put on a pizza in my brain. Uh, well, that pizza sound smells amazing. Well, we should no, go ahead and uh, no, eat on, it in the. On. Yeah, have, no, no, please, please, oh, Bobby, is, Bobby, please, please have a slice. It is disrespectful and unsanitary to eat in a room with the dead He's body. not dead, okay? Like, y'all just stop pretending, okay? Just take it to the lobby. Don't worry, Jesse. Yeah, I'm where's, sure this where's the, the lobby around here? I'm sure Jesse. this is the only time these people have put dirty paws on John Cabo. I beg your pardon. Were you not hugged enough as a child? Yeah, actually, <laughs> I don't like hooks. <laughs> maybe, maybe, well, do you maybe, like you cheese? maybe you need a hug. And Michael will go and try and no. fucking damn it. He's gonna like <laughs> back away. It's like that you take a step forward, he takes a step back kind of a thing. Oh, no, oh. Hold, hold still and try to hug you. <laughs> no, no. And he'll like backtrack to try and put another person like in your path. Y'all right, uh, go yeah. hug it out. We're gonna go uh, pound nuts pizzas over here. And uh, uh, can you show us the way, uh, Miss uh, Jesse? The only thing I'd like to yeah, do I'm, I'm here. sure there's probably some sort of just foyer or lobby. Ain't, ain't, yeah, I, I don't know. Not my way rule, not a rule I don't about understand in this your room. whole thing with food in the wake room. But like, none of the rules said that. None of the rules said that. There's, well, they we also said food in don't here poop earlier. on the floor, there but we understand in etiquette. Here earlier. There's a fucking There's Coke a bowl in the bathroom. Pool. I don't I think ain't. it fucking matters. <laughs> it, I'm sorry, did you say there, there's Coke in the bathroom? No. Coke, Coke? <laughs> like, oh, right. uh, excuse me, he's just to like hand the pizza to Bobby. Hey Crawford. They're gonna oh, go sure, to the bathroom. All right. oh. <laughs> oh, before you leave, though, before you leave, uh, Nathaniel's going to meet your eye and say, I'm not surprised you're that weak again, Crawford. I'm sure you can raise his eyes at you as you go to leave to go get Coke. T takes takes a drink of the bourbon and this <laughs> spit right, right, in, right in Nathaniel's face. <laughs> That's unsanitary. <laughs> Ow, my eyes. How's it feel to be the least favorite son? Goes to the bathroom. <laughs> we should probably let those two go ahead and fuck. We should, and then the rest of us can just go in the room over there and have some pizza. How about that? And uh, I think you all watch as he like dabs at his eyes, but it's not enough. And he pulls off, and those eyes aren't brown anymore as he pulls them, exchanges for a pair of glasses. And they Your are- Your eyes are gone! No, they're they're not brown, but they are the exact <laughs> shade of blue that uh, John Kebo had, like identical. It's almost like looking into his eyes, pretty much. Your eyes are um, gone. Your eyes. Like fucking context. <laughs> All right, come on, buddy. You probably had one too many, but uh, some of this pizza will help you uh, get sobered up. Come on. He puts his arm around Michael and steers him towards the oh, uh, hug. lobby. This is nice. <laughs> His eyes were right. gone. Did you see it? His eyes were gone. 
Um, Crystal just kind of like stays up on like the platform where the the coffin is, <laughs> like not like lounging like on the <laughs> coffin, just... but like just posting it, Next like step. surveying the like fucktardery that is happening in the wake room. <laughs> You're welcome, Aaron. <laughs> Somewhere a grandfather clock strikes 7 p.m. It's only 7 p.m. Well, oh, this is going to be a long night. Stupid shit doesn't happen till 11. You still got time. Closing time around here? Closing Should've time seen. is at dusk. <clears throat> Jesse opens uh, another bottle of balls and just sort of slinks into one of the seats. Uh, Nathaniel's going to go up to the coffin. Would you mind giving us a moment? And he'll look at Crystal, who's standing right next to it. I am. Just <laughs> be nice. He has feelings, you know. She slinks off. <laughs> and if they're like, if he, uh, Nathaniel's alone next to the coffin, he'll uh, sort of bend a little. Well, you said you wanted me to see you. <laughs> His body does not reply to you. Yeah, and he just, he just like stands there contemplatively looking over this body, like waiting probably for several minutes. And just stays. Doesn't say anything after that. Is there anything in particular you're doing besides just waiting? Um, I think he's eyeing up his wedding ring on his finger. Maybe it's every now and then. Uh. But yeah, you know, the phone said he wanted him to look at him. Come see him. Hold so on he's one second. Him. Mm -hmm. oh, you can keep going. I just meant, hold on one second uh, yeah. for your answer. Oh, yes. Yes. No worries. But yeah, so, you know, the phone call said that he wanted him to see him. And so he's seeing him. You know, it's, it's strange because especially now that he's, you know, taken his contacts out and He's got his glasses on and, you know, he's used to seeing his eyes reflected in his father and the fact that his eyes are closed is strange. I don't think Nathaniel recalls ever seeing a time when his father's eyes were closed. He was always so busy playing something, seeing someone, doing something. The idea of him sleeping or not being up and doing something is so foreign doesn't feel peaceful either like you look at people sleeping in the movie cliche as he looks so peaceful yeah it's like that oh, okay no so he's just yeah he's just looking at this this ring almost that's not yeah. the one that he wore with your mother that was a very simple titanium band you know with the like the ring through the middle and then the, the outside was the metal like a man's band is he not and he's not wearing that other one no i is crystal still in the room i assume uh he, his eyebrows sort of drawn in. He looks kind of angry. And he's like, could you explain this, Miss Leonard? And he'll lift up uh, John's hand with the ring on it. What do you mean? This isn't his wedding ring, but it seems like almost a match set to the one you're wearing. Strange. Maybe that's the one he requested to be buried in. 
last wishes and all. Tell me, how many times did you have to stop him to make a career for yourself? Didn't stop him. Anytime. Before my career was off the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, and John just is gonna pull the ring off of him. Not like like harshly, but just like gently remove it. Oh, you're really disrespecting Jennifer's wishes. I don't think you keen to know anything about my mother's wishes. Keen to know that she's a liar. Excuse me. What? Pray tell Just what makes a you think family friend to you, right? Nathaniel? Hmm. He always did have a type. You're one of many, you know that, right? One of many what? Talented artists he surround him, surrounded himself with? Flavor of the month. Are you just mad? Because he didn't give you attention? Didn't treat us like the rest of his musician friends? Because you're obviously not musically inclined. Most of us in this room are. Or, you know, you're the kind person who, like, decided to take care of him in his old age. Music is irrelevant in life. It's not necessary. It's this frivolous. Is life, Nathaniel. John knew that. He lived by it. Hmm. He lived by something, that's sure. But you know what? Maybe you two would have fit. And he like slips the ring back on, pats the hand and like places it back on the chest. Takes a step away and goes over to the Old and dead in case cap. you're wondering. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, it's going to go for the, the alcohol. this time? No, I'm not breathing this time. It's going to go for the alcohol cabinet. Like you've definitely, you've touched a nerve or 10. Your so, favorite drinks in there. Only 10? Damn. So <laughs> Jessie's there because she never left. So she saw the whole like exchange and she's oh, yeah. like, I'm not sober enough. This is fucking awkward. So <laughs> kill me now. Yeah, there's <laughs> a bottle of uh, McAllen 40 in there. And she's just pouring like Everclear into her balls. <laughs> Everclear? You know, there's nicer things in here if you'd like a drink, Miss Jessie. Yeah, R Rowan's not there to top her off anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll take the McAllen 40. And at first he goes to reach for a glass, but then decides not to and just undoes it and takes a swig. I mean, I'm I'm not here to get trashed, but um, I shouldn't I, I shouldn't have overheard that. And I'm real sorry. It's fine. It's not like apparently he deemed to keep it secret enough with uh, that ring. I... I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I thought he was, I don't know, different. Um, not, not that kind of man. Um... I'll tell you what kind of man Jean Cabot Jr. is. After all, uh, as Jean Cabot Jr., I knew quite well, at least in another lifetime. He is selfish, hedonistic, and that's it. There's not much more to hey, that. Hey, um, he's right. He's right there. He's right there. A body I, I, is right there. I, I get that you guys didn't have the best relationship, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, he, he was, he liked, he, he showed me good your to picture. You. He showed me your picture. He was real proud of you. What'd the kid look like in the picture? Uh, Jesse will give the description. Tyler, was it actually him or was it someone else? Uh, well, so I, I got to roll to know the secret. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so that was yeah. how I 
and yeah, he's he actually did. surprised because that doesn't look like who i mean i mean the brown contacts are out and the clearly dyed hair clearly perma straightened hair uh wouldn't recognize to what that child looks like and he actually looks confused um i think he kind of regretted um he never said it i'm just sort of guessing here so um pardon me if i if i overstep but um I think he regretted the rift, and he just didn't know how to fix it. You see his hand goes back into his pocket, and you hear the crinkling of paper once more before he's just going to go take a seat with the bottle of uh, McCallum. Uh, Jesse will sit not next to Nathaniel, but like two or three seats away. So like, you, you have your space, but I'm still here if you want to keep talking doesn't okay jesse won't say anything just settles in for a very long awkward night that's when <clears throat> uh who's closest to the casket now crystal that's when you notice crystal that the wife Jennifer slash Rose left a uh, manila, like a one of those little legal folders there with some paper inside of it. Where exactly? It had In fallen. The casket. It had fallen from wherever it was to the floor and slid underneath of it a little bit. Easy to miss. She probably forgot about it because she was clearly distraught. Clearly. Um. <laughs> Look at it. Okay, Lupine Vendetta, you don't have to tell me twice. Um, <laughs> uh, she'll just uh, reach out, reach down, pull the envelope out. Is it hefty? No. Like just a page or two, maybe. Yep. It's a list of requests for the wake that she apparently forgot to give you. That whole bit about honor the family's wishes. I mean, she told us she was still there. And there's more stuff in this than what she said, but it's clearly her handwriting and she signed it. Cool. So kind of peruse it. There's something for every hour of the night. Oh. 7 p.m. Missed. None, because <laughs> 7 p.m. is the first okay. one. Okay. 7 p.m. All of you take turns telling each other your fondest memory of John. <clears throat> that being gross. Anything juicy on there? No, no, no. All of you are supposed to take turns telling each other your fondest memory out loud at 7 p.m. I understand that. Crystal is not saying that to anyone. She is reading through the list to see if there's anything actually entertaining or juicy on this list. Oh, the GM hasn't created the full list yet because it depends on what the players do. Well, that is a GM problem. <laughs> <laughs> I see Tyler and I subscribe to the same school of game running. <laughs> yep. So whatever you guys do will determine what I do to make it even more awkward. And the first one is things that you like because I'm looking at Nathaniel. Fine. Um, she looks over the list, decides she's disgusted with something that's written on the list, looks over at Jesse, who's like three pints to the fucking wind. And she's I mean, just she's like, not, like, Jesse's not trying to get I'm, drunk. I'm, just ex loosened. I'm exaggerating. You've been drinking your Everclear and your balls bottle. Anyway, she like looks over at Jesse and she's like, that'll work. <laughs> she walks over and she's like, here. You're in charge. Uh, oh, 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 in charge of what? Oh, 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 um, okay. The family's um, wishes. You were his neighbor. You took care of him. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll do it. Um, so I guess we got to do a thing every hour. Um, hang on. I'm going to go get the others. Uh, and she'll go out to where <laughs> the pizza party is happening. Okay. We will jump forward to where you've collected everyone to spare that agony. 
Yeah. For Jesse. Uh, hey, excuse um, excuse me, God. I, th- I think I think Rowan has brought the eight ball with them, though. Oh, except oh, that no. except that God has to uh, do something mm. creepy. So or, I'm sorry, God is going to allow Ambrose to do something creepy. So Michael, what you got? Oh no, I, I was just going to ask. Uh, with the eating of some pizza, has Michael sobered up a bit? Yes. A bit. You're not slurring anymore, but your inhibitions are lower than they would normally be. Fantastic. Michael, Michael, hey, 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 this this will this will help. And <laughs> Rowan will be sliding. Your inhibitions have lowered, and there's a young man who looks quite similar to John Cabot in that room. Oh my. I, I promise this will sober you up. This that you'll 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 have your faculties. I promise. No, I I, I have allergies. Thank you, though. No, no, Al just used this, actually. That's that's where it started. No, 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 no. What fuck that's, are that's you fine. selling? I don't have any ghosts in my blood, but thank you. Mm. Yet. Not you, Bobby? No? You're good? Yet. Is he, like, ha- hauling out a bag full of cocaine? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You bring that shit in here? Get the fuck out it of was here. In, it was in the bathroom. Get it the fuck made. out of here. Get that shit out of here. Pockets <laughs> it. <laughs> I thought he said was talking about Coca Cola. What the fuck? He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna finish this pizza. All right, we're all ready to do whatever the hell. Do the dosy do and turn yourself around or whatever. Um. Anyway, it's seven. So there's thing we gotta do. What do what do what do what do we have? To what do you do? mean? I thought we got um, the rules. No, it's it's apparently uh, stuff that Jennifer, Jennifer wanted to tell us the rest. Well, I thought that you spoke with her one. already. We did. Yeah, and, and so she she left this list of of stuff that she wants us to do. I guess like um, a way to remember John every hour. That's absurd. Do that. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't involve sweeping. Or, it's or it's all pretty reasonable funeral stuff. Um, well, I mean, but Crystal already spoke with her, and and she got we all spoke with her. She was brought into the room by the funeral director, and we all asked her what her wishes were because that's one of the director's rules. Yeah, exactly. Crystal. Yeah, and one As of the I... things was to not argue. So anyway, it's seven o'clock, and um. We're supposed to share our favorite memory of of John, and um, you know my my favorite memory is when I first got here and uh, I didn't know anybody, uh, I didn't know a single person, and I had to leave all my all my friends and family behind, um, and I didn't have anybody to talk to, and I was really um, I was lonely, and and I was scared. And the moving company was late and I thought like, man, I lost all my family and I don't even have any of my stuff. Um, And I just would have lost it. It was so embarrassing stuck on on the front lawn. Um, And and John came out with, with two mugs of hot cocoa and like he like, he did the whole thing with like the whipped cream and like the little crushed like candy canes on it. Um, oh, my mind went somewhere else when you said something about the whipped cream. My apologies. Um, you know, and he didn't ask what was wrong and he didn't ask anything. He just shared some cocoa with me and and that was the first nice thing anyone had, had done for me in a long time. And that's my favorite memory of John. Mighty nice. Um, what about you, Bobby? Oh, you know, I, I had, uh, I had it all but given up on playing this here harmonica a long time ago. Uh, even after uh, John had told me that he he saw some uh, something special with me. So I I dropped out of high school and I was a whole mess, but I got into construction. I found a job out west, uh, putting down floors, you know, for this new new development. 
and I, <laughs> I'll never forget it. And I, I had just finished doing the floor. So there's one place and I come to this car and this guy gets out of the car. Well, it's, it's Mr. Cabo. I said, I can't believe it. This has to be some sort of one in a million coincidence. You're John Cabo, right? You're my music teacher from high school. And he didn't recognize me at first, but after, after a couple of drinks, after a couple of beers, I think he started to remember who it was. And he said, you know, I think you still got it. You still keep that harmonica? I said, no, I, th I threw it out. I was like, you ought to pick it back up. And, you know, you can keep doing this the rest of your life, but you ought to, you ought to, you, you had something when you had, when you had that rhythm, when you had that music in your hands. You got something inside of you, Bobby. You need to get that song out of you. Everybody's got a song in them. Just like, yeah, you know, how they, how the saying goes, everybody can, has a book inside and they need to write. Well, his philosophy was that everybody had a song that they had to play. And I believed him. So after I finished that, I, <laughs> well, after I finished that job, I went back home and I got my harmonica and I've been, I've been playing the shit out of that thing for the last couple of years, just trying to get good enough so I could bring it to his attention and say, hey, look, boss, you know, I, I, had, I think I got it. Uh, I just wish I had gotten here sooner, <laughs> you know, circumstances being what they are and all that. But uh, yeah, I remember that day like like uh, oh, I don't think I can I can ever forget that day. That's my uh, that's my favorite memory of John's. Um, M Michael, do you want to go next? Uh, uh, sure. You know, uh, sitting in the man cave on the, the couch and watching a sports, drinking beers and man stuff wings. Pretty sure there were wings. I mean, uh, John, John never talked to me about sports. Like what, what was his favorite team? What was his favorite beer? Uh, his favorite team was, uh, uh, you know, it depended on the sport. It really hey, did. Hey, hey, Michael, we can all smell the shit from here. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Rowan. Fine. Tell your lies. I, just, I don't think John Gabo could tell one sports team from another. I think you're muted, Crystal. You would be correct. <laughs> I said, you don't seem like a sports ball guy, Michael. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, uh, uh, lacrosse. It's understandable if you're having trouble recollecting a fond memory of your time with him. Yeah, okay. That, because that's... you had a shitty time, Nathaniel, doesn't mean the rest of us did. So... <laughs> tell, exactly. tell him. I did tell him, course. Crystal. Tell him. Exactly. Now, I mean, well, if that's so, then give us a real memory, Michael Winthrop. There's weight to the air when he says that, and you realize each of you that you can choose to lie, but there'll be a consequence. You must find a happy memory and tell it, or there will be a price. Same as there's a price for breaking every rule. Oh, okay. So apparently, Voodoo Arcade paid for creepy. Yes. Shit. Give it. <laughs> I paid for creepy. Yep, Ambrose <laughs> does it creepy. I okay. Look, so the man cave sports was obviously. You know why I don't like to share my feelings. That's just not not what I do. Um. Okay, but but uh, one time he was outside grilling. It was a it was a neighborhood barbecue, after all, and uh, I, I went to hand him a plate of the the ribs to to continue cooking on the grill, and his hand touched mine. And I remember it being soft and 
gentle and and uh, he stared into my eyes for a couple seconds and they were so blue I felt like I was drowning and the barbecue was really great everyone got smashed and there were fireworks it was amazing and man stuff there are you happy nathaniel's just looking at your eyes um, with those same blue eyes yeah that was that, that was um a, a real great memory uh yeah um uh Chris, no rowan rowan what, what's your favorite memory that's well, easy for me uh, it was early on when I first started playing piano. Um, I'd stop every time I hit a wrong note. And John shut up and told me, no one hears the wrong note. They hear when you stop playing. Always keep playing. And so I've always kept playing. That's it? That's your story? Oh, Bobby, with your bullshit harmonica story, you don't know about playing music, please. Oh, uh, whatever, fucking asshole. Go back to snorting some cocaine or something. You're more interesting than anyway. Uh, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, um, <laughs> I bet, I bet you have, you've, you've got a memory, right? Like maybe from when you were little, like Christmas or maybe a birthday or. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh sure, yes, you know my birthday because. Oh wait, no, he didn't attend those parties. Um, let me think. Um, uh, yes, the the national debate championships where I won first place. Yes, he, when he was standing. Oh wait, no, 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 he wasn't standing in the crowd. Um, let's think. Let's think. Um, the airport when I was leaving to go to Harvard after I'd been accepted on a full ride. Granted, I didn't need one. Uh, but let me think. Um, no, he wasn't there for that. Um. When I had to get my tonsils out as a small child, I was very, very scared. He does. Yes, was in the room. Oh, wait, no, he wasn't there. Wait, not a pity party, man. Come I'm on. I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're asking I'm for a memory, confused. I'm afraid. Okay, hold on. Maybe I missed something also. Do we know that he's your dad yet? Or are you still. Oh, yeah. People have called that bullshit out forever ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Am I really listening to the crackhead? No. Um, no that's fair. That's However. Fair. How are you and Rachel's character and some Michael's character did it roles to figure it out. So yeah, Chris, you guys Crystal have on roles. has put it together in her head, regardless of the crackhead. Yeah. I mean, he does. When you look, when you look at his eyes, you're like, shit, those are John's eyes. Yeah. That was probably the, yeah. uh, 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 JJ, he... JJ, JJ oh. he was at every recital for me. Yeah, I know. I'm sure he was at every single one of your recitals. Also don't call me JJ. I oh, sorry. Been... sorry. Nate. Nathaniel. I haven't been JJ in years. Now here's an interesting Great. twist. I'm going to throw at Crystal and Jesse. Because you two of these people were probably the ones that John would have actually opened up to the most. Mm. He talked about his son a lot. He always regretted that he didn't spend time with him, but his wife wanted to keep him away because his wife was convinced it wasn't his. Do with that what you will, players. Oh, spicy. Right now, Jesse, absolutely nothing. This is awkward <laughs> enough already. Yes, but waiting, I, you know what? I'm waiting for Nathaniel. Keep going. You know what? My, my fondest memory of him was walking out of the door of his home, shutting it for the last time, and never going back. Out. The house accepts that. Hey, Nathaniel. Crystal. Do you know how hard it is? raise a kid that isn't yours i'm afraid i have no children okay hmm. can't imagine so... why <laughs> so, Crystal, what's your happy memory of wow. john oh I'll, I'll get there jesse i'm not done mm -hmm. <laughs> you need a drink yet jesse <laughs> <laughs> need more balls <laughs> oh, her internet is freezing up at the worst possible Turn moment. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. I'll, She's I'll shocked she into back. silence. <laughs> Just shocked into silence. Return to us, Jesse. Oh, no.
Definitely winning oh, that so staring contest. <laughs> <laughs> while uh, while we're all sitting there and Jesse's like contemplating what she's going to say next, Michael sits there and goes, "Drowning, absolutely drowning. I couldn't ah. breathe. Ah, she's back. Thanks. Uh, yeah, ah. sorry about that. Hey. Uh, I could hear all of you. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah, but, you can hear uh, froze. It's like when I fall asleep sometimes. So if you. So if you could hear us, feel free to answer my question. You need a drink yet, Jesse? Uh, yeah, so uh, my answer that I don't think went through is Jesse is continuing to just nurse her vodka and balls. Okay. And like her her goal, she's not explicitly intending to get drunk, but all of these assholes are driving her to drink. So, you know, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, caffeine and a hooch, what could go wrong? Caffeine and a hooch. So then carry on other people okay. that aren't Jesse. Uh, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there, Jesse. I'm not done. You are so spoiled by your own delusion of how hard your life was. Yeah, sure. He could have been there more, but his life wasn't perfect either. And um, your mom kind of sucks ass. My mother is a saint for yeah. everything she put up with that man that he did. She was very good. Saint? Yeah, I bet she At was really good being to you, a Michael. Mother. Hmm? She was, she was very really... good at being a mother. I'm sure she was like super sweet, caring. It's probably yes. all the guilt. She has nothing to she had nothing to be guilty of other than her association choosing it. Tyler, can, can I, I mean, make a, was... in my in my inebriated say, can I can I clock the thing between Crystal and Nathaniel right now? If it was so terrible and your mother was such a saint, then she could have Which rescued role? you from that situation and left. But she didn't. Why would she stay? And you see like his lips just pursing, hand clutching the bottle. It's, it's his mind, right? Yes. All right, I'll, I'll roll solo. Solo die. People are foolish when they Three? love something. Something or someone. Some, sure, someone. The idea of, let's call it the idea of someone. I am happy to spend word to get closer. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. Um, the idea of someone. Ooh. I'm afraid right. of that furious typing, just so you know. <laughs> so Why would you be? I definitely get secret. I got no secret messages. What are you worried about? Who, who said secret <laughs> messages? No one said secret messages here. Just stop. Ambrose, God. <laughs> God. Have you gotten your secret secret C's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rowan just leans back with it with his, his bourbon. <laughs> Anyway, what was your Same. memory so we can be done with this, Crystal? Am I literally the only one left? No. The niece is suddenly standing behind Jesse, elbowing her, going, Look at these assholes fighting. I don't know. Jesse is mostly looking at Nathaniel and Rowan. Yeah. And uh, Jesse will whisper back to the niece, like, I don't know how to make them stop. My cousin just uh really, really hates her dad. I don't know if you can. Um, his dad, her his dad, dad, his dad, his dad. Uh, what was the niece's name? Catherine, Kathy Lynn, Catherine, Kathy Lynn, hey, Catherine, or Kathy. You got you got a memory. I do. I have a lot of memories of him that are my favorites, but the first one that comes to mind is probably that time. Uh, dad forgot to pick me up from school again. It was the third time that month when uncle came to get me and he knew what was happening and his own brother was kind of an asshole. <laughs> I'm watching Mike uh, Nathaniel <laughs> over here. He knew my dad was kind of an asshole and he always tried to take good care of me. But that day, that day he was sad too. I don't know why it was something about 
Uh, it was something about JJ and my aunt. So he took me out to my favorite place to get ice cream, which whatever, if that's a cliche memory. That's not the part that matters. Rowan's going to turn like dressed to us like, he always showed up for the people he cared about, didn't he? The part that matters is what he told me. I'll never forget what he said. But I'm not going to tell you assholes that. It was the best life advice I ever got. Voodoo it was Arcade. Mango was Voodoo like Arcade. <laughs> I was just like, he wants to hear about the ice cream. Mango Gelato. Lord. So nice he remembered to pick someone up from school. God, Nathaniel, do you ever stop? No, no, he never does. Oh, Lord. What's your letter say, Nate? Why are you here? It's none of your business. Crystal, you have it gone. Oh, I think picture. she is dead. I think she is dead. That was Catherine, my cousin. Oh, sorry. My bad. No, Rowan, stand up for me. Keep going. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't know you. <laughs> I told you where the Coke was. <laughs> Yes, you told the fucking recovering addict where the coke was. I did. Um, I 100% did. So, Crystal, I mean, I could give some suggestions. If you need help remembering things, I'm sure I could help. Uh, when, when did you first realize you loved him? <laughs> I'd like to hear that story. If that's not the best memory, that's fine. But I'd also like to hear that story. Could I hear that story? <laughs> I am so disappointed in my friend. Um, Jesse, oh, just a quick tidbit. Um, you can love more than one person. Just an FYI. Yeah, but uh, you can make you make promises. That's all. They both made promises. I'm pretty sure mm. that they couldn't keep. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. It's none of my business. You're right. Rowan's, it's not. Rowan's going to look at her at the end of like, it's about to get spicy, ain't it? <laughs> Please don't lean in my direction. You smell like failure and coke. Hmm. Oh, well, you smell like success and douchebaggery. So, I mean, it kind of kind of matches, you know, you're giving off the same energy. And at least I think enough of myself, douchebag or not, to not fling myself at married individuals. <laughs> hey, look, I'm I'm sorry. I was out of line earlier. I shouldn't have said anything. Um, please, Crystal. Um, whatever memory you want. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. You I'm know, very sorry. No, we're, we're, no, we're, 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 we're like playing this pageant of fake dead dudes funeral like go ahead <laughs> go ahead with I this mean, pageant <clears throat> to be fair not that it matters to jesse's morality or nathan's little uh stuck up nathaniel potato potato jennifer and john were separated thanks what and I, yeah, Nathaniel pulls out his phone and sends a text to his mom, uh, to Jennifer Lyons. Oh, Were you womp, he... womp. Sorry. <laughs> you're fine. You're good. You're good. Well, it's fucking cooked up. It's good. And he just sends a text and it's like, Were you and he separating? At the time, we were together they were separated i'm a lot of things but not that so 
as I mentioned, you can love more than one person. John and I were together and I was with, I was dating some other people and I was really close to them and you know, things happen, relationships end. Uh, this one ended pretty badly. Um, and I came home to the little shitty studio we shared because I refused to let him get a nice place for us because I wasn't going to be a leech on his fortune. So I paid for everything, but I came home and I was an utter asshole. My emotions weren't very checked back then. Um, I wanted to block him off. I wanted to not let him in, not let him do anything to try and comfort me. And all he did was sit on the bed and stare at me with those beautiful, caring, empathetic eyes. And he said he wasn't leaving, no matter what I did, no matter what I said. And that was the first time I felt safe, that someone wasn't gonna go anywhere, no matter the mood swings or the success or or anything. And that's the day he took me out and um, she like pulls out the chain that has a, the ring around her neck and he got me this. It was a promise ring that he would never hurt me. That's when I knew I loved him, Rowan. Well, at least you're the first one who is fully honest here, I guess. I was lying. Sorry, sorry, Jesse. Sorry, that that was mostly for the rest of them. That was mostly for the rest of them, not you. Don't worry about him, Jesse. That's the coke talking again. Bobby, I will guy. fight you right now. You know how oh, strong really? my fingers are. You know how strong my fingers are. Not half as strong as my fist in your face. <laughs> you know what? No, no. Uh, this I, is this is funeral. So whatever. All right. I, I swear to God, I just heard clock chimes. Is that an in-game thing? Oh. No, 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 that's, 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 that's Tyler's clock, Tyler's clock that's clock. in the living room. Yeah, there's a, there's a, like it's ha it happened on, on Saturday too. So <laughs> it was fucking me. So here's the funny thing: when we play this game, I turn the volume up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. Fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounds like a beautiful story, Miss Leonhard. It was. I, I wasn't crying. He was crying. Did my mother text me back at all, Tyler? Do I have signal at all or no? I missed that. You texted your mother? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Crystal claimed that uh, John and Jennifer were separated during their relationship. And so uh, Nathaniel texted uh -huh. Jennifer... Uh, and it says, um, you know, uh, were, is it true that you and he were separated or are separated or were, yeah, were separated. You know how, I'm sure you do because you go to a lot of cons, you know how people drunk text and you can tell they're sloppy drunk just by the misspellings. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually they're like, they're like. 
way too expressive. <laughs> That's what you're getting. And I'm going to tell it to you normal, but you can, in your minds, you and the audience, yeah, put this into it. sloppy drunk text. We were separated because I made a horrible mistake, but he never understood me. We were never really in love, but we stayed together for you and the media. I may have kept you away from him more than I intended. He always respected my wishes, even when I hurt him. I wish I could have had time to reconcile with him, but he's dead now. What do you then follow up to What do you mean you kept me away from him? No he... response. I, I think after all this extra stuff, like Rowan like leans back in his chair with Coke in his pocket, bourbon in his hand, and is like I'm sorry, y'all, but this is a lot. I think I think like I think this is what we're supposed to be doing. I don't I don't think this is a real funeral. I don't think John is dead. I really don't. I think this is fake. I think this is like a, a trap. And I think he's he's setting us up. For what? What purpose? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I thought it was jackass for about one hour and then all of reality disappeared and I ended up somewhere else. I, I saw I saw jackass. that corpse wink and breathe, okay? I saw it wink and breathe. Look, All right, I, hear me. I didn't know John nearly as long as any of you, but um, he wasn't that cruel. He's not being cruel. He's trying to air the dirty laundry. Listen. Look at all the dirty laundry being aired right now. He's, For he's, all... he's not even give a shit about here. <laughs> Thank you, Crawford. But for all my misgivings about my father, he clearly cared about all of you very much. Amen. And I doubt he would pull some farce of all of you for all the grandeur, all of the things that, that wasn't him. He was private. He didn't like showy displays from what I'd seen. I, that's just not who he was. All right, so you think this is any private? Let me let me let me see. Uh, Rowan's gonna go to the entrance doors to test them to see if you're actually like allowed to leave now. So you're gonna try to leave oh, the no, funeral don't home. Don't leave. I'm I'm just gonna open the doors. <laughs> just open them. Oh, Rowan, no, don't don't don't. That was one of the rules, and that funeral owner was very ominous. Yeah, we don't want you to leave. I don't think that was one Funeral. of the rules. Hard stare. Please get the fuck uh, out. <laughs> so, you're just going to walk up to the door and throw it open. That is the entirety of the action? Yes. Dramatic pause? Okay. You walk up right up to the door, fling it open. Don't look through any of the windows. Don't give a shit. Because you're you. Your character is you. You fling the doors open. And there's a dude there in a very nice, immaculate three-piece suit. Really expensive. Jet black hair. Tan skin. Jet black beard. Jet black eyes. The whole just, thing is jet black in the eyes. I'm just scared. checking the rules. Just checking the rules real quick. I'm like, I didn't really think about us not being able to leave. Charming smile. His hand is raised as I if thought. he was about to knock. <laughs> ah! Oh. You knew I was coming. I did. Oh, oh no. I guess I'm fr did, I guess I'm fresh and sir. Did I remember uh, wrong? Did I your remember name? Right? Dramatic GM lean forward. He smells like pizza. Um It's good to see you uh, again, Rowan. Did you enjoy my pizza? He technically did I, I, not. I did. So. That was but good he, pizza, thank you. It, it, it was very good. It was very good pizza. That's good. Yeah, because Tyler, good. the GM cares about fucking technicalities that he technically didn't knock. Uh-huh. He makes the uh, players care about technicalities, damn it. <laughs> he doesn't have a lab coat, it's fine. Excuse me, sir. Uh, and, and at this point, Nathaniel is going to walk over and look at him. Lock size with you. Make a foreboding roll, difficulty seven. Jesus, foreboding is... You ever heard the, the urban myth of the black-eyed kids? I have. No. 
Uh, you should look it up sometime and not sleep. Uh, <laughs> and not sleep. But real quick, what is uh, what is foreboding as a role? Soul. Oh, I'm so fucked. You said it was a seven? Mm-hmm. His eyes are just like that. There's nothing but solid black, and it's not just the lack of color. It's whatever is oh. in there is empty and dead, and it just makes you feel terrified. So you have to spend something to succeed. I can't succeed. I got a one. I would have to take, like, several weird. No, you, you yes, spend, you would. You spend soul to roll extra dice. But that would have had to happen before. Would have happened before, right. right. Oh, right. Sorry. But I also have no soul, so, like, I have no... <laughs> he has... Nathaniel has no soul. A DA with no <laughs> soul? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Shocked. <laughs> Shocked. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. He goes, he's like, excuse me, this is a private pauses part way. I assume those messages are for you. Okay? No, you're going to take the one, <laughs> yes? Yeah, I'm taking the one. Nice knowing you, by the way. Uh, please take one weird. Okay. Your personal weird. Please subtract one from your soul. Ouch. Oh, that's rude, Tyler. As you take damage. And I get control of your character for the scene. If you're oh, okay no. with that. Okay. I'm totally down. Go for oh, it. Oh no, sir. this is bad for me. This Fucking is so bad. Tell me, for me what you do with Nathaniel. I'm gonna this sit. This is so bad for me. Alright. Walks right up to Rowan, elbows him the out of the way unless you stop him, Rowan. No, not at this point, no. Who are you? I'm the pizza guy. I'm also that guy that helped you get through law school when you almost failed the bar the third time. Remember that? And you do. <laughs> that guy that guy who showed up to help you when you really, really, really needed the help and you were sitting all alone at night and you were like, God, I'd give anything to pass this law exam. I can't, I can't, I have to prove my dad wrong. Hell, Rowan I'd, is wrapped. Hell, I'd wrapped. sell my soul if I could pass this law, this law, this bar exam. Remember that? Heavy wink. Looks at Rowan. Remember that time those assholes weren't going to pay you royalties for that, that, that track you wrote and that backing piano you did and they were just going to pay you the upfront cost? I do. Freelancer or some shit? And you were like, fuck them. I'd do anything to make them hurt. And then like their whole record company went under. Winks at you. I'm whoever you need me to be when you need something that you can't get from anywhere else. You've all already answered the door for me. And then... Crystal squints. <laughs> Nathaniel. Yeah, I don't have anything quite planned yet for the rest of you, but we'll come up with something where you're either really mad or really desperate at some point in your lives. Uh, and then uh, Nathaniel says... Well, thank you. Glad you helped me. Come on in. Mm. Rowan, you gonna do anything about this? So Rowan's be like, please come on in. I'd like to ask you for some another favor, if I am I able to. Well, I thank you. I will, it will is cold Rowan, out here. This seems very strange to you because you literally heard him about to be like, this is a private affair, <laughs> and now he's suddenly letting him in. Thank you. It is cold out there. Rowan doesn't give a shit about that. <laughs> Rowan heard the other stuff and is like, yes, this dude, please. <laughs> he sweeps inside and all the lights flicker. They don't go out, but when they come back, they're like a red tint to all the lights in the building now. Got any of that pizza? I'm famished. Oh, yes. We have we have, we have three pizzas, uh, multiple, multiple flavors. Uh, anything you like, please. Uh, and we have them, and I'd like to discuss them here privately, if that's possible. Absolutely. As soon as I've fed. Right. Feed away. Now you have your character back, Nathaniel, and the rest of you can have the scene as totally not the devil goes and has pizza. So do I realize that this guy that? is that this guy came in? Like, do I realize that something wasn't right? Oh, you all do. He's got jet black eyes, including the sclera. Well, no. <laughs> Yeah, but do I remember like that I when I spoke? Oh yes, like, you have full memory of that. But it was like you were a passenger in your own body. So, uh, but it doesn't. Was... Go ahead, sorry. sorry. Oh, just we established last week that Jesse is kind of a devout Catholic. 
Um, right. Yeah. Does she? Does she pick up anything? Uh, yeah. Roll taint. Difficulty five. What would the taint be? Where do I find the taint? That is soul. The, the devil's taint, taint is in your soul. <laughs> I mean, if you want to find the taint. <laughs> There's multiple multiple of us who could give you very detailed instructions. Oh God, I rolled a two. You need a map. Catholic taint. Catholic taint. <laughs> Blame Lupine Vendetta. Just reading chat yeah. here. Oh jeez. Uh, but yeah, Nathaniel's gonna blink and look at Rowan and be like, Crawford, why did you let them in? Uh, what did you get? Sorry. Didn't you really let them in? You got a two. You gonna you gonna buy all that weird or are you gonna take it? My weird's a five. I'm gonna I'll take the two. Already? Holy shit. Oh. Right, so. oh. Okay. So I as weird is the most wholesome of us. <laughs> Please to, uh, subtract one soul in damage because you tried to sense if something was wrong with the devil. And as you did, you <laughs> involuntarily reach into your pocket and grab your rosary. Which collapses to ash in your hand. Whoops. Fine. Everything. All of the beads, yeah. the wood, collapse to ash. All that's left is the metal bits of the chain and the cross itself, which drops into your palm and leaves a burn mark. Oh, wow. And you're, you're like, ah, fuck, and you pull your hand out and look at it, and it's upside down on the palm. Oh, it's well, fine. No. It's fine. It's a Petrine cross. From. It's a Petrine Do cross. You. It's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Totally, just the iron was hot in the in the, in the drawer. Anyways, so yeah, uh, walk, walking gonna in. Oh, sorry. Spend the next couple moments just uh, painstakingly making sure she retrieves every single bead. Uh, you, they're all in your pocket. Oh, okay. It turned to ash. Well, they turn to ash, and the whole thing falls apart. And when the cross burns her, and she drops it, she reaches in her pocket for the cross, and they're all there, but the whole thing is broken. As if they'd never disintegrated. It's like you pulled on it and it broke. How the hell it got hot enough to burn you, who knows. Maybe you were too close to the radiator. You can totally explain this away if you want. It's up to you. Definitely way too close to the radiator. I'm going to go wash my hands in the bathroom. I'll be right back. So sounds good, Jesse. Uh, Rowan's, Rowan's going to turn to uh, Nathaniel slash JJ. Like, I heard what he said to you. You made a bargain. We've all made a bargain. I didn't Just... make a bargain. I, sure. I don't. Listen, I was, I asked for a study partner. I had anxiety about test taking. It's an important test, not that you would cool. understand. Cool. Lie to yourself some more. Have fun with that. And then and walks away. <laughs> you go to walk away and he's going to put a hand on your shoulder <laughs> and keep you from walking away. Yeah. Uh, I'm not lying to myself trust me there's plenty of things i've tried to lie to myself about over the years as you said he was at every single one of your concerts he was you know he'd be really sad to find out that you were taking all that talent he so coveted and loved and snorting it up your nose so uh Ro rowan like takes the bourbon and is smashed away i fucking did that already here he knows that he yeah. started me down this path oh did he did he give you drugs wow hey if y'all gonna argue uh i'm not up, arguing uh, i'm not yelling i'm gonna fight just take it outside or in the other room or something he, I also make note of the time that the devil walked in. What time is it? <laughs> that sounds like a country song. Six, 66, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's seven already, unfortunately. I wish, though, Ambrose. You're uh, I muted. I think you're muted. I was agreeing with Ambrose. It's 7.07 in six seconds. It's 7.0666. Mm. All right. I, I have a question for Tyler. Yes. You mentioned that there was a chapel in here. Yes. Is there a font? Yes. Excellent. I'm 
chugging the balls <laughs> and filling my bottle of balls up with font with holy water holy balls okay holy balls <laughs> i was thinking it i'm so glad someone said it that is Listen. the best oh, worst no. idea i was talking about at the discord you know what? oh my god crawford mr montago is right we should stop fighting we should I still I still don't believe your father's actually dead. But we we don't need this petty shit anymore. Um for Crystal and Michael and Bobby, do any of you interact with whoever this man is at all? Fuck no. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. So for much no. Bobby's speaking some sense. Uh <laughs> uh no, uh Crystal actually like she like doesn't make eye contact with the dude but like she's putting herself in between him and the casket she doesn't know what he could do with the dead body but she's not here to find out either so so you do that he walks in with a piece of pizza half devoured he looks over at you smirks well hey crystal haven't seen you in a while No response. You don't have Sir. to guard him. I'm done with him. Sir. He I paid he paid apologize. his dues. He I did tell you about that, right? About the deal he made. Sir, you can go I ahead, apologize Nathaniel. for the confusion. Uh, I apologize for the confusion. But this is a private event, and I'd like you to please leave. Everyone he actually cared about is supposed to be here, right? He cared about me. We were good friends. That's very nice, but your name was not on the list of parishioners to sit up at this wake. Are you sure? Have you looked at it? He glances back towards, you know, those funeral homes have those boards where you can put the mm -hmm. letters on it and they stick to it. And it does have mm -hmm. the names of everyone who's supposed to be at the wake. And at the very bottom, uh, D. Dot evil. Guess my name. D, capital D, period, capital E, evil. Was that there <laughs> the entire time? You don't know. You didn't look. Yeah. <laughs> D, evil. Um, I want to take a moment uh, to, like... So I, you, you, you mentioned that I could feel something before. Is that, like, something typical that i like fuck no you can all feel that this guy is not right okay all right well, listen tell you what i in my own weird way i'm here to keep the peace so you promise not to do anything untoward with and he'll sort of look around between like the other guests and we can figure out something more that you might like later Oh, I'm not here because of what I want. I'm here because of what you all want. Especially lingers on uh, Crystal and Michael. Can we all agree we want this motherfucker to leave? Uh, well, I fucked I a lot of mothers. Don't know who you're talking about. There's absolutely no one here, Bobby. Hmm. No one. I don't see anyone. What the fuck are you talking about? Right? Oh, I see what you... Okay. Yep. No one at all, Bobby. You are absolutely correct. That's when the niece walks in and says, what the hell is going? Looks at this guy. Nope. Walks right back out. Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, oh, no. you were in charge... No. Catherine, you were in charge of setting this up. And he points to the name. Was that name there before? Catherine, the door is swinging shut because Catherine said nope and just left and ignored you. Absolute little seems wise. <sighs> Where does she keep going? Hell, most likely. I mean, there, there's a chapel we that no one except Jesse's been in. We don't have to. And she <laughs> walks into the hallway. Doesn't someone have to be with the body the entire time? Yes, you're all there. Have fun. Yeah. 
Jesse's not. Jesse's like balls full of holy water. Yeah, so Jessica's not there. Crystal just left. Um, all right. You know what, Bobby? You should go to the chapel. Michael, I suggest that as well. Crawford and I will stay with our guest and keep an eye on the coffin. We're familiar with him. Them? Whatever. I thought we're all supposed to sit in here with the body. We can no, take no, turns. We're, we're, allowed, we're allowed to be proud to like explore and you know, as long as you follow the rules. It's fine. Is that what one of the things that Jennifer outlined in the rules that Crystal recorded? Like everybody has yeah. to stay in the room. Oh no, I, I, think, no. I think Jesse has those other rules specifically. No, the rules don't state that everyone has to be here. The rule says at least one person has to be in this room. Michael uh, hasn't left yet. Michael. I would really insist that you and Bobby both go to the chapel. Michael, you, the, Jesse. Why, why are you even here? You're not here for him. Why are you here? Well, wait, why do you... You don't do you have to answer leave? that question. What are you up to? Me, what, what I'm up to? No, not you. Nathaniel asked us to leave. I made a... There is something in my letter that I'd like to keep honest to. And the best way for me to do that is for both you and Mr. Montego to go to the chapel and not be in here right now. All right, we can abide by that. Come on, Mikey, let's get out of here. Let's leave Junior and... Uh... Please, for the love of all things good and holy, do not call me Junior. <laughs> But, uh, but, 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 Coked up Elton what John, we can leave him in here too. Let's go. We're fine. We're fine. Michael, uh, we'll converse more later, please. Oh, oh, all right. And he'll leave with Bobby. And then he's just going to look at Crawford Rowan and just be like, leave it to you to be the first one to break a rule and put me in this position. I, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I'm not. How's it going to feel to have a, a deep conversation with the person who is banging your not mom? Excuse me? Oh, you don't know that? You don't know that Michael is in love with your mom? You don't know that yet? Or you're not mom. Sorry, you're not mom, right? You're not mom? <sighs> My mother. And it's, I was unaware. And like you can yeah. genuinely see like hurt reflected on his face. Like I'm glad she got some happiness, apparently. Well, you know, your, your dad was sleeping around on her, so it's fine. Of course it is. You ever partake in you? He likes his prodigies. No, never. So then you really were his perfect son. Well, no. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> uh, you would have been decked straight in the fucking face. <laughs> You're not there. No. All right. Well, Mr. Uh, D. Evel, what do you need? And he like pulls out his own letter and looks at the bottom of it. What do you need to leave the rest of these people alone? And this one too, I guess. He ignores you entirely and looks at Rowan. So I hear you wanted uh, something from me. Potentially. Once I know the cost. Nathaniel, do not bargain with the devil. No cost. You just have to play a game with me. Oh, just a game. Winner takes it all. Is this like a, a like a fiddle game, you know, Devil Went Down Georgia thing? It's the devil game. There's no fiddles. Crawford, Crawford, I don't like you. You don't like me. Don't do this. I want to, like, this is the... He looks at you, John, and just Nathaniel. goes... Nathaniel! 
Nathaniel. It's John, JJ. And like, you actually see Nathaniel pushed on his heels out of the room. The door slams shut behind him. The devil turns to you, Orwin, and that's where we end this week's session. Wow, oh, is it already that late? Oh. Holy shit, I blinked. Stop blinking, Kay. Obviously, freaking yeah. Hey, I, I, fuck, I fucking hate cliffhangers so much, by the way. I fucking hate them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my welcome god. I mean, details. welcome to Tyler Games. Yeah, welcome to Tyler. No, I, 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 You're I, an I SCP! Know. Like, I know. I fucking know. I just wanted to bitch. I wanted to bitch real quick. <laughs> All right. The night closes in around you and Solemn Veil sleeps, dragging you into its nightmares. Until next week. As for other ta- terrifying tales and awesome adventures you can enjoy with us, until then, on Mondays, we are playing Dune Adventures in the Imperium, followed by, of course, this game. On Tuesdays, we are playing Twilight 2000, Red Dawn, the RPG, followed by Mecha Hack. On Wednesdays, this week, we have the finale of The One Ring, and then they begin Season 2 of Fallout. On Thursdays, we have Vampire the Requiem, followed by Pathfinder 2E Gothic Horror on Fridays. Uh, normally, we have Call of Cthulhu, Masks of Nyarlathotep, followed by Dracogenesis, our 5E game. However, this week, neither of those are playing, but we are having a Christmas Eve special. They came from the North Pole. On Saturdays, we have Warhammer, uh, Wrath and Glory, followed by SCP, the RPG, and finally, on Sundays, we have the new Kickstarter from Atlas Games, Plan Jaya, a uh, primordial setting for 5e, followed by session session one of White Wall Season 2, our Mage of the Ascension slash Werewolf the Apoc- Apocalypse crossover game. Words are hard. Players, let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in and anything else you're doing online they should check out. Hey, I'm Eric uh, at Modern Reclusa. Tonight I played Bobby, and you can find me here tomorrow for Clyde 2000. Hey, everybody, I'm Ambrose, and my cat just deserted me. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, and you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. You can also find me playing tomorrow in Twilight 2000 as my badass until he dies, you know, because that's, that's how it's going to go. Uh, I now return to being. Two hives of bees plus one very rabid squirrel in a trench coat. Uh, hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Uh, tonight I played Crystal, the punk singer, not pop. Um, I'm very sad that, that there was no ass clapping tonight. Um, you can find me this coming week on Vorpal Tales on Thursday for Pathfinders and Saturday, Christmas Day Eve, evening <laughs> for SCP, followed by episode one of White Wall Season Dose on Sunday. Hi, I'm Kay, uh, and tonight I joined and created Utter Chaos as uh, Nathaniel Lyons, also known as uh, John J.J. Cabo Jr., and yeah, you can find me at Puppy Lover12398 over on the Twitters, or you can catch me here on Saturdays during SCP playing a very completely different sweetheart character. Uh, it's very different. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm still in shock uh, by this cliffhanger and this game. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Rachel. I've been playing Jesse, the uh, do-gooder, bleeding heart, moral center of this particular game, I guess. Um, you can find me at Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, that is including ko-fi.com slash Stolen Fires, where I have my first product up on my digital store. Uh, it is a 10-page essay on how to write and run a one-shot RPG adventure. Uh, it is pay what you want, so pay what you want. Uh, if you like it, tell your friends. Uh, you will also find me, uh, let's see, tonight, this is, this is a Monday, it's a Monday. Uh, I will be running Vampire the Requiem Belial's Brood Chronicle Rebellion on Thursday. Uh, Friday we are off for Masks of Nyarlathotep, but enjoy our Christmas special, it's gonna be good times. 
Uh, and then I will be back here for the triumphant return of Sophie Delaney in Mage the Ascension White Walls. I'm really excited for that. And then I'm also appearing in Dune every Monday. Super excited about that as well. Uh, it's going to be great. So yeah, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Stolen Fires. Hello, I am Aaron. You can find me as Great Tool Everywhere. And once again, any pronouns, you give them to me, they're mine. Uh, I The next time you can see me will, might be on my own channel, but as far as the RGB is concerned, it will be over here for the Crimbus. They came from Beyond the North Pearl special. I'll be there. I think I'm playing the scientist. We'll figure it out. I was, I was being very loose about it. Couldn't find my mute button. Excellent. As usual, it is now time for the Ride or Die viewers. Audience, you can vote for any one player each session. Your vote is worth the same as a weird point, a plus one to a roll. Players, you can vote for each other. Your votes are worth a free recovery or an extra d6 on a roll of your choice for this particular story. In the normal order, begin. <laughs> I have to give special mention to Savannah's uh, I am not a pop star. That was good. <laughs> uh, and uh, I like uh, Rachel's uh, character story uh, for, for John, but I have to, if I had two votes, I'd give it to Kay and Aaron because I love the, the verbal sniping that uh, occurred throughout the session. That was really good. Uh, but since I have to choose one, um, I have to give it to Ambrose uh, for the uh, pretending to totally not be John Cabot's character. Uh, gay lover that was that was really good <laughs> i love that the barbecue story i uh, thank you <laughs> um oh this is tough it's always tough every fucking time ambrose <laughs> i know i just uh everyone has such an integral part that it's hard uh I'm going to give it to um, Kay for hopping in uh, and, like, catch up, damn it. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but, yeah, for Kay for hopping in in the second episode. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying our hot mess of a funeral experience. Yeah. Funeral experience. Um... Three stars on Yelp. <laughs> um, so many good things. Um, Aaron, my buddy, my pal, my friend, Stop. my coke addict. <laughs> My vote goes to you this week. Um, you had so many beautiful, hilarious moments. Uh, you constantly keep me on my toes in every single game where that we're in together, and I love it. So, oh man, uh, this is very hard. Um, I think I was definitely a little stuck between uh. Savannah and Aaron, because y'all just gave it so, like everything Nathaniel like shot back, y'all gave it back just as hard with those very witty one-liners. But I think I'm gonna give it to Savannah because just, you just, you just knew right where to dig to really just make it hurt for this, uh, this obnoxious little a-hole. Well, Libra, it's fine. Uh, I I'm gonna give my vote to Kay for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is the line "You smell like coke and failure." That was amazing. Um, also, uh, part of the awkwardness uh, when Jesse first encountered uh, Nathaniel is she's like, "Is this guy here to kill me? He could be here to kill me," and that is why she was so tense. Yep, I could have been there to kill you. So, so no question, my vote's going to K. It, it's not, it's not just, it's not on-screen stuff. It was like a lot of the on, <laughs> off-screen stuff where it's like, hey, uh, during the break, 
you should throw a drink in Nathaniel's <laughs> face. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something more extra. And it's like, I love it. It was so, uh, so yeah, 100% okay. 100% okay. Oh, thank it was you. It was so good. As usual, excellent being excellent to each other. And with that, take your votes, drift off to sleep. I'm sure nothing bad will happen during the night. Until next week, have a happy holiday, and we'll see you then. Have a happy holiday.